I have, and it was nice. It, it felt good. It's like you're playing football. We are live here at Best in Boxing. I'm Brandon Kyle, alongside Dylan Miranda. It was the very first fight of our card here today, brought to you by Boris Tech of Boxing. And uh, Torres is uh, putting out more of the same, it, it would appear, with uh, Rosales backing up, trying to ride the ropes and uh, avoid those longer shots. Another nice body, tripling up the hook to the body is Torres. Really doing good work here so far today. He's doing great work to the body. I would like to see him uh, keep a little bit of distance because he is longer, so getting too close is going to smother your punches. It, it, it takes away the power. Yeah, well, he's much longer, and uh, but doesn't seem like he minds getting in and fighting on the inside. Uh, it feels like Torres uh, assumes he has the advantage really anywhere they take this fight right now. But there you go. Rosales puts him to the ropes here and is doing some good work, got his head down. He's trying to bully Torres around a little bit, but Torres is fighting pretty good off the, off the ropes here. Yeah, Rosales right now is on defense. He needs to throw some power shots. He needs to make Torres respect his power. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's much respect by way of Torres right now. So he's just kind of doing uh, whatever he wants. He spun himself off the ropes, and he's back to doing that body work. A Ooh, nice that was body a good shot. Body yes, shot. it was. And you can see uh, 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 Rosales kind of dip down afterwards and grimace almost as if, like, yeah, that one uh, started to have its effect. It was right on the liver there. Oh, yeah, he felt it. Oh, but, you know, there you go. And you see a little bit of that uppercut action yeah. you wanted uh, earlier on from Torres here as he allows. It almost seems like he's allowing uh, uh, Rosales to push him to the ropes just so he can fight off of him here and push him back again. You start to see the eyes uh, lose a little bit of that fury as far as Ros Rosales is concerned. Uh, starts to look a little bit more concerned than he does look uh, aggressive here as he's taking and eating multiple shots here from Torres in the corner. Rosales is taking damage, Brandon, but he doesn't seem too worried about it. It doesn't seem like the punches are really putting that, that much of pain. So what he needs to do is he needs to multiply the amount of, of punches to get the, the referee involved. It doesn't look like Rosales has uh, any quit in him, but that was a nice right. Oh, and another and one. And another nice oh, right. Oh, and another one. And another oh. one. Oh, and four in a row. It looked like he was heat-seeking right there. And uh, barely missed. Oh! oh! And right when I say he hits another body, yeah, body shot, shot and puts Rosales down on one knee. Referee giving him that eight count. I'm not sure by the face of, of Rosales. He st it almost seemed like he stood up, but he didn't want to. Oh, he's backing up to the ropes. God, he's oh, using the ropes. And that is going to be the end to this very first fight. Victor Torres, victorious. Great job by Tor, and it was those body shots that he started right from round one. And again, you know, we assume you know it was a short notice fight. Maybe uh, Rosales, judging by that little extra weight around his belt line, might not have been in, in his absolute tip top shape for this one. And you could see Torres took advantage of that body, and uh, and it didn't take very long to culminate and put Rosales down. We are already pumped up here in the broadcast booth because this very first fight of this next installment of Best in Boxing has been a banger with Victor Torres gaining that TKO victory over Ulysses Rosales. Very good fight from Torres here, Dylan. Oh, yeah. Torres looked great. He controlled the whole fight. Yeah, for a short notice fight, he looked like he was ready to go. Very, very nice. And, and, and for Victor Torres... Not a lot of people um, invest in the body from round one. And as soon as he went in there, that's what he did. That's the game plan that he had, and it worked out for him. Yes, it certainly did. It looks like we are ready to take it to Pablo Flores for our official announcement of the victor. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Uncle Mendez gives the count of 10, officially at 2 minutes and 46 seconds in the very first round. Damas y caballeros, el referee aplica el conteo de 10 a los 2 minutos 46 segundos en el primer asalto. Declare your winner by the way of KO victory. Su vencedor por la vía del knockout. Modesto California represents El Torito, Victor Torres. El Torito with the victory here today and that opening bout of best in boxing. We are in in uh, his home, in Nuevo Toreo de Tijuana. Torres from Modesto and then 
Ulysses Rosales here. Couldn't couldn't bring it home in, in front of his home crowd, but uh, valiant effort here and uh, many props to both of these fighters on a nice opening bout here to get us started in this beautiful day of boxing in the Nuevo Toreo Arena. I uh, want to give a big shout out to State Sharp Barber Shop there, up there in Stockton, California. Big props to them for giving us a nice sponsorship for our event here today. Also, Tequila Pacheco. Tequila Pacheco, wonderful tequila here. Check them out on IG, te Tequila Pacheco 1998. Also, KR27 Group, LLC. KR27 Group LLC sponsoring our fights here today. Also, International Flavors. Guys, if you want, if you want that Muy Rico flavor here, you got to check out International Flavors up there in the Bay Area, California. Also, DJ Tri-Tip. DJ's Tri-Tip, the best Tri-Tip in the Stockton area, guys. Check them out on IG. DJ's underscore try underscore tip. Also, Tacos Don Hugo. Gotta get that taco fixed. That's the spot to go. Don't forget about Com Combat Sports Collective, representing different fighters in different arenas of combat sports. And, of course, the Pizza Factory. Guys, if you want to uh, get that top qu quality pizza action going, you got to hit the Pizza Factory. You already know. Check them out, guys. Pizza Factory, best in boxing at this Nuevo Toreo del Tijuana. This is a beautiful bullfighting arena here. Still fights going on, no bulls. It's human versus human only here uh, today, Dylan. But uh, you could tell this is a classic venue here in the city of Tijuana. And uh, we are happy to be here outside in this beautiful day here in Tijuana. In the end of November, it feels like it's the middle of summer right now. And it looks like we're ready to go to Pablo Flores to announce our next set of fights here on Best in Boxing. Oh, we're going to take a second here to make sure we sanitize the ring here. All safety measures being taken here today between each of our different individual matches. We have a full sanitation unit to come in there, sanitize the entire ring here. And we are happy to be providing broadcasting in both English and Spanish today for all of our Spanish speaking viewers here. Best in Boxing always wants to cater to all of our fans here. So we've added a additional team here of wonderful Spanish broadcasters. Happy to have them on the set with us here today. We will shortly begin this next fight here. Again, full thorough cleaning going on here. And uh, it is a nice day here in the heart of Tijuana, Baja, California. It's myself, Brandon Kyle, and my co-host here, Dylan Miranda. Been a great uh, opening bout here. And it looks like we are ready for, for more action here in our second fight today in Best in Boxing. De Tijuana, Baja California, Ronaldo Sandoval. Here we go. Representing the blue corner, we have Ronaldo Sandoval making his way from Tijuana, Mexico. This will be his debut fight. First fight as a professional. Four rounds scheduled for this super lightweight bout. Looks like Pablo's ready to announce his opponents here. Another debut fighter. From San Diego, De California. San Diego, California. Isaac Rojas. 
That's right. San Diego, California. Not too far from here. Just a stone's throw here from the uh, Nuevo Torreo Stadium bullfighting ring here. We have a wonderful bout schedule with these two debuters. Uh, you know, do you remember your debut, Dylan? What, you know, what, what are the nerves like when you make the jump finally from the amateur ranks uh, into those professional ranks? I mean, uh, the the nerves are the same as any fight. You're going to get in there and you're, you know, going to throw hands with another man. But uh, you you feel it in your gut. You know, every step that you take into the ring, you're feeling it more and more and more. But as soon as you get into that ring, as soon as you touch gloves, as soon as the you hear the ding, 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 it's all silent. It's just another boxing match. It's huh? just another fight, man. Yep. All right. Yeah, excited to see what happens. Debuters, you know, sometimes you got those nerves. Damas y caballeros, Boristeca Boxing Promotions, en asociación con King Geo Boxing y GSS Global Sports Streaming, presentan este combate pactado a cuatro asaltos en la división de peso ligero. Let's get ready for four rounds of boxing in the lightweight division. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces, Miguel Hernández, Francisco Pacheco y Carlos de la Rocha. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, su referee para este combate, Angel Mendez. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears black trunks with red and white. He officially weighs in 134 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, con pantalones de color negro con rojo y blanco, con un peso de 134 libras. And he makes today his pro debut, haciendo su debut profesional de la natura de Tijuana, Baja California. Ronaldo Sandoval! And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner, who wears black and white. He officially weighs in 133 pounds. Y su rival en esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo color negro con blanco, con un peso oficial de 133 libras. And also making today his pro debut, haciendo también su debut profesional. He hails. Armando's Boxing Club, San Diego, California, USA, Isaac Rojas. And now with the final instructions, dando las indicaciones finales, su referee, Ángel Méndez. Four rounds, cuatro asaltos. Obey my commands at all times. Proteganse a todo momento, sigan las instrucciones. Touch him up. All right, Dylan, we are ready to go to the second bout at our best in boxing card here, presented by Boris Teca Promotions and King Geo Promotions here. Referee making sure all the uh, scoring judges ringside are ready to go. And before you know it, you hear that first professional ding ding for both these guys, and we are underway. It is myself, Brandon, Kyle, alongside my co host, Dylan Miranda. For this second fight, Isaac Rojas is a, from San Diego, wearing the all-black trunks, taking on Tijuana's Ooh. Renato Saldaval. And man, right off the bat, Rojas is pressuring Sandoval, putting some heavy shots in there. Sandoval doesn't look like he's very intimidated, though. Got a nice high guard. Ooh, but, you know, catching some big counters as he comes in here. Both men looking focused and prime here. Very aggressive start here for uh, for, for Isaac. You know what? And that might be the nerves because you want to come in here and you want to put uh, the fear inside of the opponent. But he he should not forget that this is a four-round fight and you don't want to blow your whole load on the first round. Yeah, there's a four-round fight here and the sun is beaming down on these two warriors here. So there's a little extra heat in the ring. But I uh, tell you what, they don't need it with the way Rosales is coming forward. Uh, he's providing enough heat in that ring himself. Whoa, slips a hook and comes back with an overhand right, barely misses. These boys are just, they are firing away here and they are barely missing these kill shots. I wonder if Rojas was, uh, if he knew that he was fighting a southpaw for your debut? Yeah, again, we were talking about, as in our first fight, you know, you come in and, and you don't have much time to study your opponent. Uh, and so maybe he's trying to just really push and uh, uh, back up here, uh, Ronaldo Sandoval. Ronaldo Sandoval, though, doesn't look like he's uh, too bothered by this forward pressure. In fact, speaking of forward pressure, you see uh, uh, Rojas is already starting to, 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 to take some steam off of that and back himself up to the ropes here. Oh, big left hook coming over the top of the guard 
of Rojas. He eats it well, though. Now he comes forward with a nice overhand right himself. We're seeing a classic Southpaw versus Orthodox banger here so far, Dylan. Oh, yeah. This is competitive. Now, Rojas. Rojas seems to be taking a step back. He's waiting too much, and he can't stay in that corner. This is not like the amateurs. Big shots. Big shots coming here. Yeah, no you head gear, have, smaller he has gloves. To move. Yeah, he cannot keep taking the shots. And maybe you were right. Maybe he came in with those nerves. He put a little bit too much energy in that first half of the round, and he's already fading a little bit, it looks like, in the second half of this first round. It's, it, it's, uh, it's a mistake that, you know, it happens. Hopefully he survives to the next round. He can make adjustments. Oh. Those body shots by Sandoval, though, are Big going shot. to be a factor if the fight goes on. Well, and then the Sandoval now on the flip side, he has to make sure he conserves a little bit of energy because he's putting everything he can into these shots. That's right. Well, Rojas is going nowhere fast. He actually is able to turn Sandoval against the ropes. But, man, Sandoval starts to push oh. him back again with major shots getting landed. Wow. Oh, oh. 10 seconds oh. left. They thought that was over. Man, uh, Ro Rojas is Can't so, so eager mistake. so eager to get back to his to his corner and read re a good just. uppercut at the end there by Sandoval. Big Time, big time. Bombs getting thrown in that first round, Dylan. Oh, yeah. You knew this was going to happen. This is San Diego versus Tijuana. Tijuana has competition with everybody around. Mexicali, Ensenada, Rosarito. Now, you know, uh, you, there's got to be a little extra pressure on Sandoval. I mean, he's... Uh, in his hometown, in making his, hometown, his pro debut. Right. You know he wants to do well, and, and I tell you what, he looked like he did pretty good in that first round after uh, surviving an initial uh, onslaught coming from uh, Rojas here in that first round. You see how deep Rojas is breathing right now. That's the danger of coming in uh, that aggressive on the first first round, especially for your debut. We got a sponsor here. Let's think, Modesco Car Toys here. You guys want to customize your car audio, mobile video, they can deck you out here. Don't forget about Game Up Nutrition, guys. Go follow them on Instagram at Game Up Nutrition to get your nutrition to the next level. Model Sporting Goods, got to go to Moe's if you want to get all the best sporting good accessories. And we are into our second round here of our second fight. This is a lightweight fight scheduled for four rounds between two debuters here. Isaac Rojas is in the all-black shorts with the white gloves. Black gloves with the black and red shorts here for Sandoval. It was a good first round back and forth with Rojas coming out very aggressive in the first minute, but then fading a little bit early. And you that, see that straight left that Sandoval is oh, throwing? Just landed a big one. You're right, Dylan. Yeah, I see it. Rojas needs to throw a straight because he's throwing it as a hook, and it's too wide. Oh, so that's the straight the, the straight line beats the the The, the, the straight's going to get there first. Yep, and you see, uh, <clears throat> as you said that, uh, I saw that left land. It doesn't look like Rojas to see that left coming until it's already hitting there. Wow, wow, wow. Sandoval is really looking relaxed and confident in there now. Starting to loosen up. As you see Rojas tightening up a little bit in this second round. Oh, big shots. Big shots from Sandoval. Rojas is oh, they traded hooks on that oh. one. Both of them look like they felt each other's power there. And now Rojas is coming forward and pushing Sandoval back. Oh, we have Rojas a smell fight blood on our hands. Here. Oh, yeah. Rojas looked like he was eating shots. Oh, oh another nice good left hook. Oh, and Sandoval complains that it was behind the head here. Sandoval real squared up there. Really just kind of coming forward. Taking shots, little bounce here, little pause in the action as they, as they settle down. Oh, nice. Left See, hook. Sandoval is staying more consistent. He's staying busy and he's throwing the straight punches that are landing. Now, Rojas, when he does throw, he's throwing the hooks, man. Those are hard. But they don't always make it. Sometimes the straight shots hit first. Yeah, you see a lot of nice straight lefts. Like those. Double it up, followed up with a three hooks here from Sandoval. Sandoval starting to put his eyebrows together and come forward here. I think both these guys have earned each other's respect, and now they are they are deeply entrenched in this four-round war they've started. Rojas is staying in front of Sandoval. That was a good left hook. Big he's, time. He's waiting to counter on what Sandoval is throwing. And Sandoval looks tired. So this might be the time for Rojas to come in with those wide shots. Oh, 
and then you see it right there. Wide oh. pressure coming and landing. Oh, and then uh, Sandoval comes back, misses a big hook himself. Wow, wow, Dylan. We are we are lucky to be ringside for this oh, back yeah. and forth battle here today. Good body shot oh, by Sandoval. Oh, huge shot. Slips a big counter hook coming back here from Sandoval. Sandoval is pushing Rojas now back to the ropes. Man, these guys are just going back and forth with 10 seconds left oh, oh. in this second round. Good head movement by Rojas. Big shots being traded by both of these fighters. Wow, Dylan. That was a good round. That was a great round. I mean, every time you think that Sandoval is starting to take over the fight, Rojas, Rojas will eat back. a couple shots and come back with a couple big shots of his own. Really, I mean, I feel like, you know, this could easily be a, a, a tied-up fight after two rounds here, Dylan. Yeah. Yeah, for this round, I don't know who I would give it to. It was a good back and forth. But Rojas seems to be waiting on Sandoval to throw so he can counter. Or wait for him to get tired so he can go in with those hard shots. But when Sandoval is staying busy with those straight shots, even though they're not hard punches, they don't allow you to think. They don't allow you to use strategy. Yeah, I tell you what, it, it seems like uh, it seems like when uh, Sandoval keeps straight, keeps length, he does much better. But then he gets even drawn into these hook wars here with the shorter Rojas, and it doesn't seem to be a good idea for him to do that. But you know, again, you know, it's that debut fight. You want to show yeah. well, and you don't want to let anybody get the best of you. So it looks like he's readjusted here. These boys had a nice minute to take a deep breath. Both of them seem to have settled into their pro debut and they are really letting it fly. Nerves went out the window now. Yeah, they're just in there fighting now. Uh, started off as a boxing oh. match. And, oh, another big overhand. It, it, it seems like neither of these guys wants oh. to back down from the other one. Wow, Rojas is really Strong coming forward now. hooks there by Rojas. You see a little bit of frustration start to creep into the eyes of Ronaldo Sandoval in the black and red trunks. Isaac Rojas is slipping and ripping. I think Rojas might have timed him now. He has the distance. He's waiting for him to throw so he can get him with the hooks. You see how he steps back? Oh, there's some straight shots here. Followed making him miss by a little bit. Barely making him miss. Oh, but Sandoval really putting the pedal to the metal in this round so far. Starting off this third round with some big shots here. Oh, ooh, triples up the jab, but again, yeah, we see a head, head movement. movement by Rojas. Good head movement, yeah. Oh, again, slipping that hook. Doesn't seem like if it's a hook war, it doesn't seem like it's going to favor Sandoval. So maybe you're right. Maybe those straight lefts uh, is what he needs to get back to to find more success. He's almost allowing Rojas to, to hit those counters. He's getting right into his range. But, man, I'll tell you what, Sandoval is not backing down at all, coming forward. Uh, it seems like he's overwhelming with just activity right now, Rojas, is right. Sandoval. Right now, I don't think it's overwhelming because Rojas does not seem bothered at all. I think he's waiting. I think he's timing him for the counters because he's had success with those hooks. Well, he's going to have to start throwing those hooks. There you <laughs> go. There it is. As you were saying, because he can't, he can't allow the activity to outweigh the power shots or else it could go exactly. to, to his opponent in the judges' scorecards. So. But he's waiting a little bit too, too long. He needs to throw that again. There you go. Oh, and again, uh, Sandoval complains about a shot to the back of the head, but it, it seems like it's right on the ear line, but not, not a dirty or illegal shot. And referee hasn't, hasn't given any warnings yet. Oh, here we go. Back again. Oh, some body work being done by Sandoval now. Oh, push it forward. Good God. These boys, I don't know Rojas. how they're both still standing right now. They just won't stop throwing. Dylan. Roca needs to throw back. He needs to throw back. He can't wait for that strong shot. He needs to be more active right now. Well, you know what? Again, now Sandoval you know, keeps complaining about the, the yeah, hooks hitting him in the time. back. Yeah, third time. Yeah, third time. But, you know, you got to just uh, bite down on that mouthpiece. If the ref's not going to do anything, then it's your time oh, to do something. Oh. Speaking of those short hooks over the top, that right hand lands again for Rojas. Ooh, big shots from both guys coming. Oh. oh, and it's those hooks from Rojas, but he doesn't throw them often enough to, to really do damage. Yeah. When he does, though, like he's doing right now. Very effective, right? Very effective. But yeah, activity, activity advantage in that third round definitely went to Sandoval. To Sandoval, yes. Oh, look at, you can see uh, Rojas's arms on the ropes. He's leaning down as he waits for his corner to drop the, the stool for him here. Definitely both. 
fighters are putting a lot into each of these punches. I mean, at this point, as we move into our fourth and final round, it's going to be a war of attrition and to see who just who's, who wants it more in this in their pro debuts here, Dylan. That's what it's going to be, Brandon, because both these guys are exhausted. We'll Throw. see who's more conditioned here in this fourth round. You know, this is where uh, this is where boys are made to men here in the in the final round, especially in a pro debut for these young boxers. Rojas coming in from San Diego, crossing the border to take on Ronaldo Sandoval in his hometown of Tijuana. Damas y caballeros, Boristeca Boxing Promotions. And you see those hooks again. You see Rojas on the ropes kind of slipping, trying to rip. Big, big activity here from Sandoval. You see the weathering here of, of Rojas, and we go into our fourth and final round of this four-round lightweight bout. Oh, a little timeout, maybe uh, equipment issue. Mouthpiece. Yeah. Got to get that mouthpiece in there. These boys are so eager to get back out there. Oh! But, hey, the way these guys are throwing shots, mouthpieces are absolutely necessary oh, yeah, here, Billy. Rojas is over there throwing rocks practically. Yeah, that debut nerves, still still nerves showing on, on these guys' debuters. A little rookie mistake there, but they both have their mouthpieces in, and they're both using them right now as they exchange shots here. But, man, Sandoval seems to be pushing. He wants to push. He wants Sandoval to show. Sandoval seems comfortable. Yeah. He's going in there. He must smell something because... He's going in for the kill. Maybe his corner said, hey, guy, this guy's, this look, guy's starting tired. to get tired. Let's yeah. push. Push right now. Try to, the, the dam might be and cracking. Maybe we put a little pressure and the whole thing will burst right now for Rojas. But I tell you what, man, you got a guy like Rojas slipping and ripping those counters back oh, to you like that. Good then left you by it's Sandoval. tough to go in there and, and try to finish the job against a guy like that. But look at Rojas Sandoval. Needs to move. Keep throwing in the, in the, in the phone booth here. Oh, oh, these boys are changed. back and forth. Everything they got here, everything they got, they're laying on the line. Wow, we are we are really uh, seeing a show of heart from both of these fighters here today in their pro debuts. And the pressure that Sandoval is putting on Rojas right now is, is what he needs to do. Man, the referee breaking him up is the only lull in the action so far in this fourth and final round. You see... Sandoval's coach is up there pleading for him to go forward, be aggressive, try to take this from Rojas. You don't know what it's going to look like on the judges' scorecards right now. Sandoval is trying to uh, really end this fight on a high note. A nice hook to the uppercut combo there. They are shoulder to shoulder going back and forth. Big hooks coming back from, Ro from Rojas. Sandoval can take advantage right now because Rojas is breathing through his mouth. He is tired. Sandoval needs to stand a little bit, a little bit more back, give himself distance, and go in with some hard shots. But that's easier said than done. Right now, he is exhausted. Yeah, both of these guys got to be tired with the output that they've been, been, been giving in these four rounds of these debut here for both of them. Oh, there's some more head movement, but man, he's got to be careful dipping his head down there. He is, it looks like Rojas is just trying to survive the onslaught right now of Ronaldo Sandoval. Sandoval needs to throw more punches. Just quick, quick little punches. Make the ref um, see that Rojas is not responding and the fight's over. Yeah, you know, one, one final flurry could be the difference. But, you know, every time exactly. there's any second to breathe for Sandoval, Rojas is throwing big counter hooks back his way. So, Rojas comes back, that's right. You know, it, he's doing just enough. But, man, you could tell that he is really starting to wear the punches Ooh. here. But big, even the last 10 seconds of this fourth and final round of these guys' debut fight here. Ross swings and misses. Oh, big, oh. big counter hooks coming back from Ronaldo Sandoval. And we have, we have been treated to a wonderful boxing war here today in Tijuana, Mexico. These two debuters, they did not disappoint. You know, sometimes you're not sure of the level of boxing you're going to see here. We saw good boxing. We saw great heart. We saw great fighting here, slugging it out here in that fourth and final round, Dylan. I mean, that's a tough one to call, but it really seems like uh, Sandoval had uh, 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 more juice in those final rounds. That's right. I think he had more activity, more uh, punch output, but congratulations to both Isaac Rojas and Ronaldo Sandoval. It's not easy stepping into that ring, especially during a uh, COVID season. Yeah, I know it's a, a sacrifice everyone has to make to be able to just compete um, in these trying times here. But I tell you what here, I know it's cliche, but I win or loss, both of these fighters' stock is going to go up after this fight. 
Here's that replay of that final round here. Both guys just literally, almost like they were tied together by a rope. They would not separate, they just keep throwing. There's uh, Sandoval, even though he's the longer fighter, just willing to step in and engage back and forth. Look at the hooks from, from Rojas, man. No quit in that guy here today, putting it. Back and forth, man, we're watching a bar fight. Yeah, seriously, a four round uh -huh. professional bar fight. Man, man, makes you a boxing fan to see a fight like that here today, Dylan. That's right, big props to both these fighters. Here we go. Let's take it to Pablo Force for official announcement. Now, ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. Después de cuatro rounds de combate, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. El juez, Judge Miguel Hernández, he scores it 40 to 36, 40 a 36. And both judges, Francisco Pacheco and Carlos de la Rocha, have the same scores of 39 to 37. 39 a 37, estos dos últimos jueces. For your winner, by the way, of unanimous decision. Su vencedor por la vía de la decisión unánime. Con su primer victoria en esta tarde. De Tijuana, Baja California. Ronaldo Sandoval. Well, kind of as we predicted, those last two rounds, it was a really close and fight. And also a big round of applause for his opponent from San Diego, California. También un reconocimiento para su rival, Isaac Rojas. Yeah, big round of applause for both of these fighters, you know. They made fans out of me today, Dylan, and I'm sure they made fans of everybody that's watching at home on Fight Up TV. We are happy to be here in Tijuana. Wonderful promotion here from Boris Teca and King Geo Promotions. Put it together here. Again, guys, uh, if you need to look clean for a special event or just, just for any day, you got to go to Stay Sharp Barber Shop. Stay Sharp Barber Shop. They'll, they'll get you faded correct. Don't forget, uh, after you go out, after that nice haircut, make sure you check out Pacheco Tequila. That will be the tequila to get the party started and keep it going here. Check them out on IG, Tequila Pacheco. And, of course, KR27 Group. LLC. Got to thank them for their wonderful sponsorship of today's event. And DJs are international flavors. The best flavors in the Bay Area, guys. Check out international flavors. And make sure you check out, speaking of flavor, DJ's Tri-Tip. DJ's Tri-Tip. Helping to, to make sure this event could be possible here today at IG's DJ's underscore tri-tip. Don't forget Tacos Don Hugo. Check them out at IG Tacos underscore Don Hugo. Go check out some of those pictures. Get your appetite up. Don't forget about Combat Sports Collective, of course. All your combat sports representation needs there. Check them out, combatsportscollective.com. And uh, after the fight here, I think I'm going to get some pizza. I don't know if they have pizza factories here in Tijuana, but if you have a pizza factory in your hometown, you got to make sure that's the place to get it. That's the place to get your pizza fixes here. And we are so happy to be here at this beautiful Thank venue you, at Best Boxing. 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 has been one of my goals since I started watching boxing, not fighting. Um, but... Uh, it's been one of my goals to become a, a boxing promoter. Um, you know, I see a lot of these fighters, they don't have any help, any proper advice, and I've learned a lot uh, throughout the years, so my goal is just to help out these fighters and, uh, you know, look for that superstar in, in boxing, your next superstar. Being a promoter and, and also being a fighter and having my first event as the main event is, is you know, it's off the bucket list, you know? And it, it's pretty dope because it's my first event, I'm able to do this as my first event. Um, you know, uh, it's boxing, you know, um, and it's a beautiful sport and I just want to, you know, be able to showcase my talents to, to the world and, um, and also as a promoter, look for fighters that don't have that opportunity. So my, like I said, my goal is just to, to look for those fighters that are very, very good, but they don't have that proper advice and promote them as well. Personally, it's not a challenge to me promoting and, and training at the same time. There's 24 hours in a day, and there's a lot of there's a lot of things you can do. 
you just got to be disciplined. You got to, you just can't be, you know, half-assing it. If not, you're not going to do well on either side. Um, at the end of the day, not just anybody can, can be a boxing promoter or anything. There's a lot of fighters that have tried it and they haven't succeeded just because that's, you know, unfortunately that's all they are. They're a fighter. They don't have that business mentality. This is not my first business path in my, in my, in my life. I've done a lot of businesses, businesses in the outside of boxing. And uh, but like I said, boxing is just my next, my next path currently in my career. Huge thank you to, to Saul Reels for letting me co-promote with him. He's a really good friend of mine. I met him a couple years ago. He's, uh, he's just in it like me. He's doing it, he's trying to help out, get this, this exposure to people uh, through Best in Boxing, uh, Global Sports Network, Fight Hub. He's just, he's just trying to get all this uh, exposure to, to people that don't know these fighters and, and possibly give them that big break in their career. Uh, so he's a very great, great friend of mine. And then I'm fully looking forward to co-promoting this, this event tomorrow with them. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape for our next fight. It is going to be an exciting six round fight between Karina Moreno and Naomi Reyes. Moreno, 39, has quite uh, a few years on the 26 year old Reyes. About the same height. Reyes has a one inch height advantage. Both coming in right around 105 here, that weight pound limit. And uh, long reach advantage, even though she's a little bit shorter for Karina Moreno, of a 59 inches to 53 inches of Naomi Reyes. Dylan, what, what, what does each fighter need to do here in this next fight? What do you think the keys to victory are for each fighter to be victorious in this next uh, bout here? The keys to victory right now that I'm seeing with Karina Moreno is that she has the experience as well as the reach. She can do a lot with that. She can keep Naomi Reyes at arm's length and control the entire fight. However, if Naomi Reyes wants to win this fight, she has to get close, she has to make it dirty, and she has to go and hurt Karina on the inside. And let's take it to Pablo for our next ring announcements. Oh, no, we are going to wait a second, and we're going to give you the rules first. This is a no standing eight count fight, no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and fighters cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The fight will become official on the scorecards after the fourth round. De Tepic, Nayarit, Naomi Reyes. Reyes making her way to the ring. She understands that she is at a huge disadvantage as far as experience is concerned. But it didn't seem to affect her at weigh-ins yesterday. She was smiling. She was jovial, excited to be here. I mean, I talked to her after weigh-ins, and she said, she, you know, she she is not intimidated by the former five-time world champion, Karina Moreno, at all. She says, I'm a human. She's a human. She, I'm going to feel her punches, sure. But she's going to feel my punches as well. Estados Unidos, Karina Moreno. Like I said, former five-time world champion Karina Moreno. She's got so much experience in that ring, over 30 fights. And uh, she expects to use that experience, like you said. She needs to, to dismantle her opponent here today. And we will see if the former world champion can do just that in this sixth round. Third fight Damas y caballeros, Boristeca Boxing Promotions en asociación con King Geo Boxing y BIB, the best in boxing, presentan este encuentro pactado a seis rounds en la división de peso paja. Six rounds of boxing in the straw boy division. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces, Francisco Pacheco, Miguel Hernández y Carlos de la Rocha. And your referee in charge, su referee para este combate, Ángel Méndez. Interesting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. She wears black and gold. She officially weighs in 105 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, con pantaloncillo en color negro con oro, con un peso de 105 libras. In nine professional bouts, he stands with a record a near perfect one. Eight victories, one lone defeat, and five of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de ocho victorias, una derrota, y cinco de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Representando a su natal, Tepic Nayarit. 
La Chapita, Naomi Reyes. And her opponent across the ring standing in the red corner. She wears black and silver. She officially weighs in 104 and a half pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo color negro con plata, con un peso de 104.5 libras. And 31 professional bouts. She stands with a record of 25 victories, 6 defeats, and 6 of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 25 victorias, 6 derrotas, y 6 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Hailing out of Watsonville, California, USA. Here is the former world champion, Karina Moreno. And with the final instructions, your referee in charge, para dar las indicaciones finales, su referee, Ángel Méndez. Six rounds, six assaults. Muy buena suerte. Toshima. And we are live here for our third bout of this Boris Teca Boxing Promotions Best in Boxing event. We have former world champion Karina Moreno in the black with the, with the silver trim. You have her opponent, Naomi Reyes. She's got the black with the gold trim. It's silver versus gold here in this third six-round fight scheduled. And the first belt is underway and right away. Looks like Reyes is trying to initiate her lack of intimidation by sticking that jab, landing that cross. Moreno dancing around, oh, right into that hook range, and they are trading hooks back and forth already here, Dylan. That's right, and you know something, Brandon? That could intimidate somebody, uh, Karina Moreno's record, but it can also inspire somebody like Naomi Reyes to say, this girl has experience, this girl has what I want, I'm going to go out there, I'm going to get it. So victory would be even more important victory over, would for be a, even more an important. opponent like this, right? That's right. So sometimes when there's a match up like this, Naomi is going to come out looking her best, yeah, her she's very best. Really try to put her foot down and, 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 and prove she belongs in there, first of all, and earn That's respect right. of the former world champion, Karina Moreno. And as we see right off the bat, she's coming in there and showing that she's not afraid. She's earning that respect from Karina. Yeah, but, you know, again, that experience, I'm sure Karina has, has had plenty of opponents come in there and, and try to really dominate from the very start, but you see her staying calm and composed, S little head movement there, really kind of s both fighters settling down here into this first round of this scheduled six-round event. You have to think about the debut, uh, the, the fighters that we saw debut, where they come in real excited and they blow their load on the, on the first fight. Yes. That can happen with Naomi. She needs to control the pace. Karina's more more calm. You see her more. Uh, she, she's so comfortable in there. She's analyzing. She's letting her throw. She's grabbing. It's a six-round fight. So, yeah, that's a, that's a lot of time to do work. But uh, keep in mind, folks, that uh, the female professionals go for two-minute rounds as opposed to the uh, male three-minute right. rounds. So they really have to put in some work in those two minutes to try to leave an impression to the judges. <laughs> Ten seconds left in that opening two-minute round, so to speak, there. And both girls are showing that they uh, that they are not intimidated and that they are in there to fight here today, Dylan. As Moreno, this is a good round for both. I thought so too. That was a you know back and forth round, probably a tough round to score. You know that first round, you know really little feel out coming from Naomi Reyes. She just came in there, really tried to establish, uh, you know the fact that she is here to fight right off the bat against the former five-time world champion in Karina Moreno. Yeah, Karina seemed like she was taking it uh, a bit more calm than, than Naomi. Maybe she's taking that as a fill-out round. Um, but Naomi just went in there blazing, throwing combinations. Yeah, and we'll see if that, you know, is, is something that might kind of wear later on in the fight, putting all that energy here into that first round. But, uh, you know, both girls look like they're in great shape, so I, I have a feeling that neither of them is going to relent any time in this scheduled six-rounder. Little one more warning from the ref, hey, make sure you avoid the back of the head and right to the action, right off the start of this second round here between this. Naomi Reyes in the black and gold and Karina Moreno in the black and silver trunks. Yeah, this second round, we're gonna see the answer that Karina has to the pressure that Naomi's bringing. 
We'll see if that experience and that reach advantage is going to start to play a part here. You see how she's just missing? Naomi's just missing with those punches. That gives Karina the opportunity to counter. And maybe that's what she's counting on. Yeah, she's, you, you see hopping in, hopping yeah, out. Yeah, you see her and, and, and Moreno's kind of backing up and mm -hmm. bouncing, trying to almost trying to get her to throw heavy and miss so she can hit those counters with a longer reach. And although she is... Good right shot by Karina. Oh, yeah, big shots exchange. Ooh, nice uppercut there. Oh, but a counter right hook here from Moreno. Oh, Moreno, again, like she's been warned several times about the back of the head. You see she's about to throw, and then she realized, see, and that's just, that's just ring generalship right there to be so aware. Good right hook. Karina's straight right is, is, is landing flush. Big shots landing for Moreno. But this, man, Naomi Reyes has got a look in her eye like she is. Uh, it's almost like I got that bulldog. Almost like a terrier tenacity here she's coming forward with. That's right, but you see the intelligence of Karina baiting her, just waiting for her to throw those hard punches, and she's catching her, catching Naomi with those hard, straight rights. And then, like you said, sometimes a fighter is eager when they see this big, uh, uh, experienced opponent in front of them to prove what they can do. Almost, maybe, possibly too eager. That could be at their detriment. Like, they're coming forward maybe not as uh, intelligently, just because they're so eager to prove that they belong there. That's right. Good exchanges in the middle of the ring. I love the in and outs of Karina. Yeah, Comes she's in, very fluid. One, two, and then jumps out. Very, very fluid. And you'll see that later on from, from King Gio Gonzalez. He has a similar in and out style there in our main event. Uh, but you see the former champ, world champion Moreno just really, you know, being very technical. You Oh, a little surprise for our my co-host Dylan here. Let's take a look at uh, my, my, my broadcast partner on his pro debut right here. Oh, uh, look at this handsome devil in there. Speaking of using his length. Oh, man, that, this takes me back. The in and out there. Yeah, was, was that a, was that a, uh, what was that experience like, uh, your, your pro debut there uh, uh, for best in boxing? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell the public, it's scary as hell. But as soon as you get in there, you go to work. That's right here. Yeah, you'll always remember who you who you shared the ring with that first pro fight, right? Oh yeah, I remember the referee, everything. <laughs> nice. And now there, oh, and there he is today, the one, the only Dylan Miranda here. He's he, he's calling fights here. Happy to have him in the booth here from take the trip here from San Diego. Right on, Dylan. Glad to have you. Honored to be calling these fights here with you. We are ready to. Head into the next round here, the third round of this scheduled six rounder between Naomi Reyes and the black and gold as she takes on former five time world champion Karina Moreno in the silver and black shorts. You see Naomi throwing a lot of punches, but she's she's very close. I'm not sure if those punches have power in them because she's smothering them. Now when Karina throws, she's throwing at a distance. She's throwing with, with some some weight on those punches. Yeah, you see uh, very aggressive is uh, Reyes, but yeah, very uh, sharp and technical is Moreno. You, it's, a, it's a good uh, stylistic matchup here. It you is. You see uh, uh, almost like a bull charging and a matador kind of avoiding and countering shots here. Oh, that was a good left hook by Naomi. Yeah. Yeah, Karina Moreno eats a, a, a right hand from Reyes. Yeah, Moreno took a long layoff. She had multiple injuries. She was out of the ring for about six years. She is. Uh, this is her third fight on her on her comeback tour here. She's two and zero since she's returned to the ring and looking to make it three and zero. She said she wants to you know climb the hill again and and try to re regain her world titles. Um, and, and she's doing a good job here. But man, she is not have an easy task with Reyes continuing to come forward. But as, as far as wearing it on their face, you see Reyes with a huge knot swelling under the right eye right now, probably from those, those counter shots coming from Moreno. And uh, you can kind of see the, 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 the shots accumulate on the face here. Reyes, but man, oh. it's a big counter hook herself. Starting to land those hooks now. It's starting to turn more into a brawl here, Dylan. And as you see Moreno kind of putting her foot down, she's uh, not being quite as technical, being more aggressive. And you can see both of them are eating shots here with 10 seconds left in this third round. You know, like Mike Tyson says, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Sometimes your plan is to, to, to back up. Sometimes your plan is to come forward and it looks like both these girls whether the plan was to come forward or not in the beginning of this fight they're both coming forward and throwing it bombs now. right now so we see Karina Moreno in the corner 
looking calm, looking poised. No real stress in her face here as we go into this fourth round. Talking with her corner, just really relaxed. Just, uh, you know, another day at the office so far here. You see... Uh, yeah, the calmness that Karina Moreno's wearing is, is, is great. That's what you expect from somebody with the experience that she has. But you know what? Naomi has been going in there and she's been in Karina's face the entire fight. I'm sure that's the game plan that they had and, and they're... And let's see, speaking of that back and forth action, let's take a look at that replay real quick. As we enter our fourth round, these girls uh, finally said, let's just uh, draw the line in the middle of the ring here and throw bombs. And you can see both of them going with everything they got here. Wow, what a wonderful third fight we have here at Best in Boxing. And we are underway. Myself, Brandon Kyle here alongside Dylan Miranda. As we see former five-time world champion Karina Moreno taking on a scrappy up-and-coming professional in Naomi Reyes. You see, again, Reyes is not uh, looking like she's tiring at all from all this output. But uh, you see uh, Moreno starting to land more and more. But also you, get, you see Reyes landing some big shots that she wasn't landing early in the fight, Dylan. Yeah, and one of the changes that I'm seeing is that Moreno was walking backwards before. Now she's the one putting on the pressure. Maybe feels a little bit more comfortable now. She's kind of felt the power of Reyes. Uh, maybe feels comfortable kind of taking shots and taking more risks to come forward and be aggressive here as we walk into the second half of this six-rounder. Well, Naomi Reyes definitely um, reduced her output. She was going in there with throwing flurry after flurry. Now she's being a bit smarter, a bit more strategic with the punches that she's throwing. Yeah, you know, you, you eat a bunch of punches. As I said, that hematoma starting to swell under the right eye of Naomi Reyes. Maybe she's starting to feel those punches landed by Moreno in the last three rounds, and she's starting to rethink a little bit of her strategy. She put so much pressure on in those first three rounds. Moreno's able to, uh, to, to eat those sh shots and, and make her miss and make her pay, but both girls are, are, are taking a lot of damage here. Uh, trading back and forth in this six rounder. And Karina's lining that straight right. Mm. Nice uppercut lead hook here from, from Reyes. Oh, nice one two there from Moreno. You see Reyes start to bounce a little bit more head movement, maybe trying to avoid some of those shots. Reyes is trying to catch Moreno with that, that lead uppercut. Oh, look, Moreno puts her head down, comes in. Ten seconds left in that fourth round. And almost a little bit of explanation point there. The end of that fourth round. What are you thinking, Dylan? I mean, what are you, what are you thinking going into this fifth round? you got two more rounds left. It's a, it's a good back-and-forth fight. You know, a tough fight to score, though. Yeah, for this last round, I don't know who I would give it to. But we have two rounds left. So I expect both these girls to go out there and go for the kill. Yeah, you know. Because right now it's, it's, it's up in the air. It's, it's definitely a very close fight. You know, uh, both corners probably letting their fighters know you got to do everything you can in these last two rounds uh, if you want to come out victorious here today. And we check out that last round. What are you seeing as you, as you watch these girls go back and forth here, Dylan? I'm seeing Karina waiting. Waiting on Naomi. You, you, you see how long she's waiting for her to come in? She's trying to get her with a, a, a counter. You know, neither fighter has been, seemed to have been rocked or hurt too bad in this fight. They've been, both eaten big shots, but, you know, both of them look focused. Eyebrows pushed together. Neither of their eyes wavering in this back and forth fight, that battle they're having so far here. Oh, a good exchange oh. right in the pocket. Oh, nice body shot from Reyes. Oh, you can hear the shots echo through this bullfighting arena, this beautiful venue we have here for Boris Teca Promotions, best in boxing. At this point, if, if Karina's going to stand in the middle and trade shots with Naomi, her, her output needs to be higher. She needs to throw more punches. You know, again, as you said, that, that could be the plan. And then as you get punched in the face, becomes more difficult but that's what it's all about there in the squared circle got to do what you got to do to to take home that victory and you see both of them trying to figure out 
We got Reyes moving into a southpaw position here. You see what she did right now? She threw a one, two, and then she moved to the side. When she's when she's going in and out, in and out, Karina is fantastic. Karina controls the fight. But when she stands there and she's trading with Naomi, you know, the output has to be up. She's giving her, her opponent a chance to outwork her here, close range. Oh, speaking of outwork, nice counter after the body shot of Moreno. Moreno's got a nice one too landing. It seems to be successful for her, but she it is. she keeps closing the range a little bit on it, and she's unable to use it when she's too close here to uh, Naomi Reyes. And Naomi's doing a great job of getting close because when she gets close, she throws those combinations that I don't think Moreno can can keep up. Oh, but it's so oh, far but so there good, we go. right? Yeah, you see her. Maybe she heard you and, and said, "Oh, you don't think I can keep up? Well, let me throw this quick double hook here." Coming back again, the girls kind of tangle up, and Moreno pushes Reyes to the ropes, tries to bully her. Oh, nice right hand lands right at the end of that that fifth round, and uh, both girls are starting to breathe heavy as we move into this sixth and final round. I mean, have you you know you're exhausted? You're going into the final round. What are you thinking as a fighter? You know, tr trying to get yourself. What do you tell yourself? to motivate you to go out there and, and, and give everything you got when you might not have much left. See, now that's going to depend on what the coaches tell them because if your coach is telling you, hey, you have this fight won, you may decide to control the distance and move around the ring. Now, if you're losing, you go in there and you're throwing everything. Yeah, and here's that replay, Dylan. What are you seeing going on in this fifth round here, these, this war between Reyes and Moreno? I'm seeing Karina doing what she's been doing the whole fight, which is jumping in there, throwing combinations, then jumping out. Now, Naomi, she's throwing combinations the whole time. Damas y caballeros, este es el round número seis. El último round, ladies and gentlemen, this is round number six. Your final round. Yeah, what do you think of Dylan? I mean, it's a tough fight to score, but I mean, you know, what we, I know you're not a judge, but you know, in your opinion, what do, what do you think's going on going into this sixth and final round? In my opinion, to be honest with you, I think both girls had their moments, so I would put this fight as an even fight. Yeah, it could definitely be a tied up fight or, or two rounds to, 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 to three rounds going into this. So this round, could, it could just be important. You don't know which fighter has the, the, the advantage right now. They're gonna be throwing shots till the end. I absolutely believe that is going to be the case. Little little tangle up here. Referee breaks him up, and we're back to the action. We are 40 seconds into the final two minutes here between former world champion Karina Moreno and up-and-coming challenge of Naomi Reyes trying to show that she can keep up with the, the queen in there and Moreno trying to reestablish Oh, that was a herself. good right hand by Naomi. And big right hand from Naomi, as you said. Oh, a nice right hand, little clip of the chin there from, from Moreno. Starting to see the, the, the shots wear on both of the faces of these fighters in there. Yeah, right? Ooh. 39 years old, what a, what a spectacle to see someone box at this level. After so many fights and so many years in the ring here, ageless wonder oh. is Moreno as she comes forward to lands big shots on the much younger Naomi Reyes. Oh, nice exchange here in the pocket of hooks. Oh, you can still hear the pop you can of the shots that. from Reyes. Still has plenty of energy and plenty of mustard on those punches coming from Reyes. But Moreno just keeps coming forward, tries to land a big overhand right of her own. Tight guard from both fighters. Oh, nice slip and rip there from Reyes. Switches in the southpaw. She's been doing that these last couple of rounds. Maybe trying to give a different look. And here we go, Dylan. Ten seconds left. This sixth and final round between these two amazing warriors so far here. Back and forth as they hook as they finish the very last bell. D Dylan, I would hate, hate, hate to be a judge for this fight. I mean... How do you score this one, man? I mean, so so many exchanges, so many back and forths. It's just got to be difficult to try to figure this one out. I don't envy them, but you know what? I hope everybody at home got to see this fight. This was a nonstop action fight from it's the start. Been great fights all card and uh, continuing here as we see former world champion Christina Moreno in a tough battle against this up and coming pro, Naomi Reyes. Huge challenge for Karina too. Even though she has all the experience, um, she does have 
the age as well. And I believe she's coming off two surgeries, two yeah. uh, knee surgeries. Yeah, big time uh, issues for her. That's why she took that long layoff. I asked if she was retired. Are you retired? Did you retire during those five, six years you didn't fight? She said, battling injuries, thought I was going to do MMA, kept getting hurt, one thing after another. Well, she does not look retired to me. Yeah, she doesn't look retired, and she doesn't look like she's lost any of her top level boxing ability. I am going to join them in the ring to interview the winner as Pablo Flores announces here, and we will get a chance to talk to the winner of this bout right now. Huge shout out to King Geo Promotions and Bodisteca Boxing for bringing us boxing fights with the proper sanitations. As we take it to Pablo Flores. And ladies and gentlemen, this bout has gone the distance of six rounds and now we go to the judges' scorecards. Después de seis rounds de combate, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. El juez, Judge Carlos de la Rocha, he scores it 59 to 55. 59-55. In judges Francisco Pacheco and Miguel Hernández, have the same scores of 58 to 56. 58 a 56 coincidieron estos últimos dos jueces. For your winner, by the way, of unanimous decision. Su vencedora por la vía de la decisión, unánime. Puritita Tim La Chapita de Tepic Nayarit, Naomi Reyes. A big round of applause for her opponent. También un fuerte aplauso para su oponente de Watsonville, California, Karina Moreno. Well, that's the decision that uh, we had predicted over here at, at our table. You know, Naomi had the output. Karina was a real smart fighter throughout the entire fight, using that jab, throwing straight right hands. Guys, but I'm Naomi. here with your winner, Naomi Reyes. Naomi, that was an incredible battle. I talked to you yesterday. You seemed like you were excited. You knew that she had a big experience advantage, but you said you looked at it as an opportunity to show what you can do. Ayer que estábamos platicando, eh, hablamos de la experiencia que tenía tu oponente frente a ti y bueno, cuéntanos. Bueno, yo ahorita pues, soy la más feliz, emocionada, yo sabía el nivel de esta peleadora, sabía la experiencia que ella tenía y claro, este, por supuesto trabajé muy duro, muy, muy, muy duro en el gimnasio para poder ganar esta pelea. Esta pelea se la quiero dedicar a toda mi gente en Nayarit, sobre todo a todo México que me está viendo. Y pues, excelente. Y muchas gracias también a la, a la poca afición que vino hoy. Este, muchísimas gracias por el apoyo. I'm really happy. Uh, I worked really strong for this fight. I know her experience. And I dedicate, I want to dedicate this fight to all my, my uh, fans from Nayarit. Now, you came in there very aggressive. It looked like you wanted to prove right away that you belong in that ring with her. But she was crafty. She was able to start to move more and land her own punches. I see you got a little swell on the right. Uh, was there any time where she hit you with anything that made you kind of take a step back and, and rethink your uh, approach? Vimos que estaba muy fuerte tu oponente y que te comenzó a boxear. Tenías, digamos que la pelea se fue un tanto complicada en ese sentido. Algo que tú quieras añadir a eso. No, pues yo sabía, otra vez te repito, sabía la experiencia que tenía mi peleadora y pues lo único que hice fue hacer pues el trabajo que sé hacer, al final de cuentas digo pues aquí arriba del ring somos ella y yo y si mi estrategia de repente no funciona, yo tengo que hacer mi propia estrategia arriba del ring y, este, y así fue como trabajé con, con, con mi inteligencia, sobre todo que ese es mi, mi don más fuerte se puede decir. I know about her experience, I know we work a lot about strategy wise and well we, we managed to, to pull this out.
Yeah, great performance. Me and my co-host Dylan were just loving it as we watched the fight. Congratulations, can't wait to see you again on Best in Boxing, guys. Let's hear it one more time for Naomi Reyes. People just don't know what we go through. All the time away from family, hours of road work, fighting through the pain of training. You know, people just don't understand how tough this life is. People ask me then, why do it? Simple. I want to be the best in boxing. Follow Best in Boxing on YouTube, where the future stars of boxing fight. He's coming. And we have Let's, the tail of the yeah, tape take here. A look at the tail of the tape here, guys. We have an exciting match coming up for this next bout here. Mario Ramirez, 22 years old, taking on Christian Cortez. He's 28 years old here. 5'8 for Ramirez. I've got a couple uh, inches on uh, Christian Cortez. Uh, about the same weight, 128 and a half for Ramirez, 129 for Christian. This is an eight round featherweight bout. Uh, Ramirez has a slight reach advantage as well. Uh, we'll see if that's going to come into play in this featherweight fight, Dylan. Yeah, good, good reach and good height advantage. But as we saw um, Canelo versus Smith, you know, sometimes that height could be a disadvantage because Christian has all that body yeah, open to we'll, him. It will see if uh, if he could take advantage, you know. So, so you're speaking of uh, uh, taking the body of, of Ramirez. What are the keys to victory for Ramirez as far as making sure that he doesn't get hit with those big body shots? Ramirez is uh, he's a smart fighter. We've seen him uh, uh, multiple times here at Best in Boxing and uh, he needs to go in there and box how he usually boxes. Real smart, keeping distance, using those straight punches, the straight right that he throws is, is, is tremendous. Um, to keep Christian Cortez from keep uh, from coming inside. Yeah, obviously a huge advantage as far as the, the reach here. So it's going to be uh, uh, someone trying to stay on the outside, obviously. Someone's trying to stay on the inside. But to be honest with you, uh, I don't know. We, we see these taller fighters, this whole car just willing to stand in the middle. Uh, speaking of this next fight, uh, the rules for the fight are as follows. No standing eight count in this fight, guys. No three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. Fighters uh, cannot be saved by the bell in any of the rounds here, and the fight will become official in the scorecards after the fourth round is completed. And uh, excited about this one. I know there's been a buzz about this one. I know we've seen Mario Ramirez before, and then the Best in Boxing crew and everyone associated with the team here at GSS Global Sports Streaming has been talking about uh, uh, this fight as one of the fights that they've highlighted for potential uh, fight of the night action going on again we're cleaning out the ring to make sure everything is uh, nice and sanitary i'll tell you why brandon i'll tell you why they're so excited for mario ramirez because even though he is a tall fighter and i'm saying he needs to keep that distance that doesn't mean he has to fight backwards he comes forward he puts on that pressure he just doesn't smother them so each punch that he throws has a possibility of knocking you out yeah we've seen he he, he does he does well to the body himself does ramirez um, so we might see a, a little bit of war of those body shots here. De Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, Mexico. Cristian Cortez. Christian Cortez coming in. Got a wealth of experience. Not the best record, but as you said earlier, at 6, 18 and 3. Y de Camalú, Baja California, Mario El Güero Ramírez. Dylan, every boxer is a performer, but not every boxer is a showman, right? It takes a certain something special. And I tell you what, when you <laughs> make your ring I ride to best in boxing on a horse, I tell you what, that's a little something special right there, my friend. Oh, yeah, for sure. 
I wonder if he came to the venue on the horse. Or if, you know, I like, wouldn't <laughs> be surprised. This is Mario Ramirez we're talking about. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing here. Very fitting as we are in this rodeo ring. Yeah. At the uh, Nuevo Toreo Arena here. Damas y caballeros, Boristeca Boxing Promotions en asociación con King Geo Boxing y GSS, Global Sports Streaming y Best in Boxing, presentan este cotejo pactado a ocho rounds en la división de peso Super Pluma. Eight rounds of boxing in the Super Featherweight Division. Sus tres jueces, your three judges, scoring this bout in ringside. Francisco Pacheco, Miguel Hernández y Carlos de la Rocha. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge, su referee para este combate, Ángel Méndez. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears the Mexican color trunks, green, white, and red. He officially weighs in 129 pounds. Presentando ustedes en esquina azul, vistiendo los colores mexicanos, verde, blanco, y rojo, con un peso de 129 libras. He stands with 27 professional bouts. Cuenta con 27 combates profesionales representando Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco. Cristian, el temible Cortés. And his opponent across the ring standing in the red corner. He wears black trunks with white trim. He officially weighs in 128 and a half pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja con pantalón sin color negro con blanco, con un peso de 128 y medio libras. In 16 professional bouts, he stands with a record, a year perfect one. 14 victories, one defeat, one draw, and four of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record casi perfecto. 14 victorias, una derrota, un empate, y cuatro de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Representando al gimnasio Iron Fist de Tijuana, el orgullo de Boriseca y de Camalú, Baja California, México. Aquí está el güero Mario Ramírez. We are ready for. And now, given the final instructions, your referee in charge. Para las indicaciones finales, su referee, Ángel Méndez. Eight rounds, ocho saltos. A todo momento, sigan las instrucciones. Buena suelta los dos, toquen guantes. Ready for this next bout, an eight rounder. Best in boxing, Boris Tega Boxing Promotions. Uh, Global Sports Streaming, so honored and, and, and privileged and, and so glad to be able to bring this broadcast to you in both English and Spanish today. Got our wonderful broadcast partners to our left doing a great a job of announcing this fight here in Spanish as we Dylan and I announce it in English so so many viewers can tune into Best in Boxing and, and be able to enjoy great commentary as we go into this eight round featherweight bout between Mario Ramirez, Ramirez in the black shorts with the white trim, taking on Christian Cortez. He is in the red shorts, the, the Mexican color shorts with the red, the white, and the green. Oh, speaking of those body shots, we see that right off the bat here coming from Mario Ramirez, Ramirez, as you said, he, he's longer but keeps good distance, and just like that, he's throwing those those nice hooks to the body, but at a nice distance as well. That's right. He's the taller, longer fighter, but he's the one that's putting on the pressure. He's just doing it in a smart, strategic way. And again, this is an eight rounder. As these uh, more experienced professionals come up to bat, you see these uh, rounds increase. More experience usually, they're going to have longer, more opportunity. But this is the first eight round here for Christian Cortez and Mario Ramirez. Both these guys uh, have a ton of experience in there, but first time going eight rounds, so we'll see if that affects the way they approach this first round here. Good hooks exchanged. That was a good hook body by Mario Ramirez. I'll tell you what, you know, I know uh, Cortez coming in with Maybe not the best record, but he's thrown some power, and when they land, you can hear him. So he does not lack power right now in this first round, scheduled for eight. Right now, Ramirez is the one that's putting on the pressure, putting on the action. But like we mentioned, this is an eight-round fight. Yeah, Ramirez uh, lost his pro debut. Since then, has not dropped a single fight here. 14-fight win streak. 
good jabs by Ramirez right through the middle of Cortez's guard. Good body shots by Ramirez as well. Yeah, I notice he used, he likes to utilize those body shots. And uh, as you said, it, it's nice to see people uh, in there using them early in the fight as opposed yeah. to waiting until the middle of the fight when it might be too late to start putting in that, that money in the bank there with those body shots. That's right, and he's doing it off the jab, Brandon, which is really smart. Some people like to go straight for the body, straight for the kill. Oh, you got to set it up. Yeah, almost make make his opponent think about defense with that jab, and when he's thinking about Drop blocking his that guard jab, down yep, yeah, then right. he's going to that body shot there. Oh, another you know, body shot from from Cortez there. Focus on Ramirez's face. Good jab, and then one two body. Ten seconds left yeah. in this opening round. Sharp jabs by Mario. Oh, nice exchange there from Cortez and lands a nice overhand right. A couple body oh. shots. Look like uh, Ramirez almost said, oh, yeah, well, eat this. Right at there to kind of put a cap on the end of that first round. Good first round, uh, kind of uh, as you said it might be or have to be here for both fighters. Yeah, I think this is the first round that actually feels like a, like a first round. You know, it's, it's both of them getting that touch, getting the feel of, of, of uh, each other. Yeah, you know, in this eight-round fight, you have to treat the race a little bit different. When you're yeah. running a 400 compared to running an 800, you gotta run the you gotta run that race a little bit different. You gotta start yeah? with a sprint. Yeah, yeah. So it seems like uh, like both of these guys are feeling it out, and uh, and we'll let's take a look actually at that first round here, Dylan. What are you seeing from these guys in this opening round? I'm seeing Ramirez staying calm, staying at his distance, where he's able to duck, to dodge. Encounter. We go into this second round for a scheduled eight in this featherweight division between Mario Ramirez in the black shorts and Christian Cortez in the red with green. Ramirez, a new father, got a one-year-old daughter back at home. I asked him, uh, "Hey, what, what, what's what's harder, being a dad or being a fighter?" And he says, "I love them both." They, they, neither of them really feel like work, you know? It's, 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 I just do it and uh, enjoy it both thoroughly. So he is excited. He's got his second fight with uh, the Sanchez brothers in his corner here, does Ramirez. Feels really confident. New strength and conditioning coach he said he has. And he feels like he is in tip top, maybe the best shape he's ever been in stepping in the ring today against Cortez. And Cortez is going to put him to the test because he is the one that's putting on the pressure now. Good defense from Cortez, you know. He's, oh, oh as good I, one. Too. As I say that, he eats a one-two, but he blocked a nice left uh, lead hook before that. But yeah, not deterring. Oh, great in counter fighting from from Ramirez so far here. And and those counter shots are going to be key for him because Cortez wants to keep this fight on the inside. And and I, I saw uh, Cortez nice little quarter turn angle out there after he stepped in to Cortez's range here. And Ramirez is using some good footwork, some, some good distance here. He's just really looking sharp so far in this eight round fight. I don't know if you noticed it, but a couple of uh, combinations before, Ramirez threw a body shot that made Cortez kind of whew. Oh, he knocked the air out of him a little bit. A little huh? bit. That might be uh, something that Ramirez is gonna continue to try to set up, but he's eating some shots, you know, I'll tell you what. Cortez is not, uh, he's not missing the mark every time here. Uh, every couple shots, he's landing a good hook on uh, the face of Mario Ramirez. But Ramirez not at all wavered from these shots. Continuing to fire back. Oh. Yeah. As you see, Ramirez is not your typical uh, Mexican fighter. He's, he uses a lot of skill, uses a lot of good footwork, a la like a Lomachenko almost, the way he cuts these quarter turns. Right. He can be close, but still be hard to hit, even, even though he's in that range of Cortez. He doesn't just go forward like the, the, the typical Mexican style where you're putting on the pressure, throwing hard punches. He uses uh, the side steps, he goes around you, uses feints. Yeah, really, real complete fire, fighter. Really, really uh, using all these different technical aspects of the boxing game. Uh, but you see, kind of thinking a little bit of how to land here, starting to slow down a little bit as far as the nonstop output. But, you know, it's hard to slow down when you got to like Cortez coming forward with these big old hooks. Back and forth. Oh, nice oh. three punch combination. Hit him with a three piece right there. But, man, is Cortez not a tough son of a gun in there? 
He was able to take those punches and keep coming forward. 10 seconds left here, guys. Second round. Big shots coming from Cortez. Pushing back Ramirez to finish that second round. A little tap of respect there as, as Cortez walks back to his corner. Here, great event here, Boris Teca Boxing. King Geo performance here. Modesto car toys, guys. You ready to trick that car out? You need some good audio. Maybe some, you can throw some TVs in the back seat so your children can can uh, not bug you all the way to Disneyland when that bla ba that place opens up again. You go to you go to Modesto Car Toys and uh, you get your your car all decked out there. They'll take care of you. Game up nutrition. After you get your car taken care of and you need to get your body taken care of, why don't you check out Game Up Nutrition there on Instagram. And then uh, when your body's nice and in shape, you go to uh, Models uh, Sporting Goods. You got to go to Moe's to get all your sporting good needs. And here we go, round three of this scheduled eight between Mario Ramirez and Christian Cortez. It's been a, uh, been a really good fight. Oh, oh head clash. Head, but both of them seem to be affected by that. You see instantly Mario Ramirez is grabbing his face. You see Cortez leaning against the ropes, wincing in pain here. Must have been a bad cut, I, 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 a mad headbutt. I don't see a cut, though, I, I, I was trying to say, um, on either fighter. But I can't really I can't get a good Mario. look. I can't see Mario. I can't see Ramirez. Um, they're wiping him down. I don't know if they're just checking to see if there might be a small abrasion on the face of Mario. That would be definitely be unfortunate, don't you? I hate to see a, a accidental headbutt cause a cut in a fight um, affecting a fighter, you know, that wasn't thrown by a punch or whatnot. Right. So, man, it's always unfortunate when you see that. Oh, he looks like he's really in pain over there. Uh, referee looking attentively, trying to get a view. It looks like there has been some blood drawn. I do see blood on the rag of the cut man for Mario Ramirez. So unfortunate when that happens. Let's see how bad that cut is. Oh, remember the fight has to go four rounds be before it becomes official. So hopefully it's not an issue that's going to prevent these guys. Let's take a look at that headbutt real quick. It looks like they're both exchanging furiously like they have been the whole round. Let's see if we can see where it happens. Oh, oh yeah. had to be there. They're both kind of uh, uh, leaning in to throw punches, and uh, they were so close that they, they ended up clashing heads there. Still working on, on the small cut there of Mario Ramirez. So unfortunate when this happens, guys. Hopefully it's not going to be an issue, and uh, they're going to be able to continue this fight. Hopefully, it, but it is important for his corner to to treat that cut right now because we still have a lot of rounds left. Yes, a lot of fight in front and of him. And I will bet you that Cortez is looking at that cut saying, okay, I have a target. Yeah, again, Cortez, with all that experience as a, a professional fighter, um, has to be aware of, uh, of the fact that his opponent is hurt. Whether it was a headbutt or not, at this point, you gotta take advantage, right? Oh yeah, of course. You get the ref involved, you can end the fight. Uh, it looks like they're collecting cards. I don't see them uh, taking off the gloves of Ramirez, so, so we may have hope. Now, I'm under the belief that, you know, if something happens before the four rounds are concluded. Oh, they're taking his gloves off. Oh, no. I believe this is gonna be a no contest. Oh, so unfortunate. We're gonna we're gonna check out a slow mo replay so if we can maybe try to see exactly where that cut took place. Yeah, there it was. Oh. Wow, how unfortunate. It was a really good co competitive fight up until till till that headbutt there. Oh yeah. Dylan. So unfortunate to see that happen. You know what? But I wanna I do wanna give props to Buddy Stack up for protecting the fighters. It's a small cut right now. If it would have gone on to the to the four rounds that were left, it could have, you know, produced a much bigger injury. Yeah, definitely disappointed. Looks like this fight is not gonna not gonna be able to play out to this eight round exciting battle that was culminating and taking shape here. And ladies and gentlemen, by the recommendation of the physician and ringside due to an accidental headbutt, the referee forces 
the bout to stop officially at nine seconds of round number three. Damas y caballeros, un cabezazo occidental lleva a la decisión del médico del ring para detener las acciones por medio del referee con un tiempo oficial de nueve segundos en el round número tres. Therefore, this bout is a no contest. Ah. Por lo tanto, este combate es sin decisión. Bummer. Big time bummer here. It is about the protection of the fighters, though. You know, you got to make sure that, you know, things like this. Very unfortunate. I'm sure both these fighters disappointed because it was shaping up to be a great fight, Dylan. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know Mario's fans are disappointed. I'm trying Mario, to Mario, even though he is from Gamalu, he has a lot of fans here in Tijuana. Yeah. Yeah, and he, and, he, and he, like again, he said he's in the great shape, maybe best shape he's ever been in. Uh, very confident, had, was not worried at all, going eight rounds for the first time. Uh, and it looked like he was, you know, just starting to get get going there. Um, Cortez coming forward with great pressure, landing some good shots himself. Um, I'm trying to take a look here, you know. So, you know, it doesn't seem like, like the cut is too debilitating. But, uh, you know, it's all about the commission protecting the fighters. You can see the sadness Damas on the face. Pronto tendremos Both fighters. Cristian Cortez contra el Mario Bueno Ramirez, número dos. Espérenla muy pronto. Yeah, we're going to have to get these guys back in here, Dylan. There's no way uh, this score has to be settled. I mean, these guys are just really starting to uh, exchange big shots and feel each other's power. Looked like they were just really starting to have fun in there. I mean... I don't know how much it costs to rent the horse for the day, but I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the horse alone should make this fight happen again. Yeah. Let's go ahead, guys. Hey, if it's Friday night or any night you want to look fly when you're going out, maybe having dinner with your lady, hit up Stay Sharp Barbershop, guys, and uh, they'll make sure that they keep you looking fresh, fly as can be for any of the events you need to be looking good for. Hopefully at those events, you're drinking Pacheco, Tequila, guys, Tequila Pacheco, 1998. Check them out on Instagram. Go check out all their great tequila products. But uh, the best way to check it out is to take a sip here. We got KR27 Group, LLC, of course. You need that representation, guys. They're the group to go to. Also, international flavors, guys. Love the best flavors in the Bay Area, guys. You need to spice up your, your, your next barbecue. That is the place to get all those wonderful flavors. And if you don't want to do your own barbecue, go to DJ's Tri-Tip. He'll take care of it for you. Check him out on, on, on Instagram at DJ underscore Tri underscore Tip. DJ's Tri-Tip. He'll take care of you. If you're not feeling like Tri-Tip and you want some tacos or maybe you want to use some of that Tri-Tip in your tacos, guys, you know, that's the place to go. Don Hugo's Tacos. He'll take care of your taco needs. And, of course, Combat Sports Collective. So many wonderful combat sports. As soon as we get going, you're going to need some representation. Guys, that's the place to, to check out if you need some, some action there. And, of course, guys, who doesn't love some pizza? Got to check out the Pizza Factory, guys. So many locations for you to enjoy. A wonderful hand-tossed pizza right there at the Pizza Factory. Factory. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for our next fight here, Dylan. We have Rene Tellez, Giron El Bravo taking on Guadalupe Acosta. Age advantage for Giron is 21 to Acosta's 27. A little bit of a height advantage, though, two inches. Acosta 5'8. Giron went measuring up at 5'6. Identical in weights, 132 each, respectively, for both fighters. Long reach advantage for Guadalupe Acosta, 72 inches to Rene Tellez Giron's 66. This is a 10 round lightweight fight, and it is going to be a banger. We both suspect. What do you think the keys to victory? You got a, quite a reach advantage for Acosta, but maybe a power advantage for Giron. What are you thinking going into this co main event here? You know, Dylan. Guadalupe is older. Right, but I think that Rene Giron has a higher boxing IQ than Guadalupe Acosta, so Guadalupe has to keep Giron off of him. 
Now, Guidon has those power shots that if you get touched by those, man, you're going to sleep. Yeah, yeah. We've seen him uh, in his last uh, uh, journey to the ring, December 2019. He knocked out a undefeated prospect in Carlos Balderas with a vicious left hook. And, uh, you know, we're excited about this 10-round fight. Let's take a look at the rules, guys. There is no standing eight count in this fight. No three knockdown rule either. Only the referee can stop the fight. Fighters cannot, I say, cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And the fight becomes official after the fourth round. And what, and what I mean by becomes official, like in that last round, they did not complete four rounds. If they had completed four rounds after that accidental headbutt cut that stopped the fight, they would go to the scorecards. So after four rounds, they can then go to the scorecards if there is some kind of issue and they cannot continue the fight. As we take a look. De Aguascalientes, Aguascalientes. Guadalupe, Acosta. Guadalupe, El Lupe Acosta, 27 years old, making his way to the ring as he slips underneath the ropes. He has the blue shorts with the white trim. Interesting. Got the socks nice socks. There. Right I see that. Look like a cannabis leaves on his socks here, maybe representing a little bit of his uh, recovery regimen. Rene Tejas, Kiran, man. Real he, cool, real calm. Look at the hair is perfectly Killer. placed here. He's coming out to XX intro. I love this song. One of my favorite highlights is a highlight of Muhammad Ali. Muhammad this song, Ali, of course. You know, yeah. And, and of course. Yeah, this it's is a, a great highlight tape. He must watch it for inspiration as well. He chose this song as his walkout song. Um, and we are excited to see. I, I enjoyed watching his fights uh, leading up to the broadcast here. Very entertaining fighter. We'll stand right in front of you. Exchange. Damas y caballeros, este es el combate coestelar de esta noche. Está pactado a 10 asaltos en la división de peso Super Pluma. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-feature bout of the evening. 10 rounds of boxing in the Super Featherweight division. And it's presented by Boriseca Boxing Promotions in association with King Geo Boxing and BIP, the best in boxing. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces. Miguel Hernandez, Francisco Pacheco, y Carlos de la Rocha. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action. Su referee para este combate, Ángel Méndez. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears blue trunks with white trim. He officially weighs in 132 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Con pantalones de color azul con blanco, con un peso de 132 libras. In 17 professional bouts, he stands with a record of 12 victories against five losses in seven of those big wins coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 12 victorias, 5 derrotas y 7 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. De Aguascalientes, Aguascalientes, Guadalupe, Acosta. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner. He wears navy blue trunks with silver trim. He officially weighs in the same 132 pounds. Y su rival en esquina roja, con pantalones de color azul con plata, con un peso de 132 libras. In 50 professional bouts, he stands standing with a record, a near perfect one. 14 victories, one defeat, and eight of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record casi perfecto. 14 victorias, una derrota, y ocho de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. El originario de Querétaro, Querétaro. Y ahora representando los colores, San Diego House of Boxing, San Diego, California, USA. René Tellez Girón. And now with the final instructions, your referee in charge, con las indicaciones finales, su referee, Ángel Méndez. Ten rounds, diez asaltos. Gentlemen, follow my instructions and obey my commands at all times. Caballeros, sigan las instrucciones, protejanse a todo momento. Buena suerte a los dos. Good luck. 
Here we go, guys. Ten rounds scheduled in this super featherweight co-main event between El Bravo, Rene Giron. 14 and 1 with 8 KOs. He is rocking the dark blue shorts with the silver trim. Taking on Guadalupe, El Lupe Acosta, 27 years old. Both of them orthodox fighters here coming out to share the ring. Both of them has gone 10 rounds. Neither of them uh, is going to be in new water here, uh, uncharted territory with this 10 round fight. They've both, they've both been there before. They say they're both ready. I asked Acosta, he's on a bit of a losing streak. He won his first eight fights. He's lost his last couple fights. I said, what, what, what have you done to, 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 to redirect course? He said, power. I've been working on my power shots. I needed more power. I've been working on my strength and conditioning. I know I'm going to need to use some power to, to get the respect of, of Giron, who he knows is coming into slug. But uh, Giron says he feels super motivated. First fight in a, in, a, in a while, in a year. But he's been training hard, and he's excited to show that he is still in great shape. And they are already trading. So you, such a size advantage for, for Acosta, but Giron is not intimidated at all. Size advantage, but the power is definitely with Giron. And you can see the calmness right now. Acosta feels like he has to go towards him. So Giron is making him work. Big overhand right. Wings over the head of Acosta. And, and Giron has that waist movement. He was, he was doing fantastic with the waist movement, which is dangerous for Acosta because the more he throws, the more openings he's making for Giron. Yeah, he is like right now, he's, he's throwing, he's landing those soft little punches, but Giron's not worried. He's moving his head, he's moving his, his, his waist. And I've seen this out of Giron before when, with that last Balderas fight. Uh, sometimes he just kind of stands there and shows that he's willing to sit there and slip and rip punches. Um, but once he's like a, a shark oh. with blood in the water, once he hurts his opponent, and he will and come forward hard once he realizes his opponent's starting to weather. But he's calm in there so far. That's a nice overhand and right there, does Giron. He's doing a great job at attacking the body. Big the very shot. first punch was a, a, a jab to the body. Big shot. That's going to make Acosta drop his guard up top. You see him lowering his guard already as Giron continues to jab at that middle middle part of Acosta's body. That can be a very dangerous thing to do, lowering those hands away from that face the way Giron throws those overhands and power shots. We've seen him put people down with a vicious left hook. It looks like he's trying to land a big overhand so far, knowing that that, that big opponent, is that, a, is that a, a punch you try to land against a taller opponent, that overhand, knowing that his head's gonna be way up there? You could, you could. It depends on, oh. Pretty, pretty it depends what you shot. see the very first the very first round. So if you see him holding his head up high, that might be a punch that you look to try to set up with body shots. Yeah, and if he has his, his guard up real real tight to, to his face, you're gonna have to, you know, do a little feints, hit him in the body, hit him up top till till that blockade is open. Nope, ten seconds left here, a little pause in the action. They kinda shake you, you, you see the power punches of, of Acosta don't seem he's not turning him over quite the same way that Giron does. So even when they land, it doesn't seem to have nearly the same effect. I, I don't believe those punches that Acosta's throwing right now are power shots. He's throwing them more just 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 to throw volume because Giron is moving forward and he's throwing those power shots real calm, real slow. But this was the first round. Now both fighters know what the other fighters bring to the table. So we're going to see the adjustments. In this round, we're going to see how, how the rest of the fight is most likely going to go. Speaking of adjustments, what does Acosta have to do in, in between rounds to adjust and, and be more effective in the second round against Giron? I don't, I don't think Giron respects his power because Giron is standing there receiving, receiving. And like Acosta said, he needs more power in those shots. Right now he needs to sit down. He's a little bit tall and he's moving. He's using the ring, which is it's good. He's not receiving a lot of punches. But if he wants uh, Giron to respect his power, he needs to sit down on him. As you sit saw, down, throw saw the punches, the, and then move. In that replay we just watched, you saw that power punches coming from Giron. Giron looks like he's a little bit more active. Both of them look a little bit more frenetic in their pace so far here today in this second round. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. Oh, there's that overhand. We'll see if, uh, if, if Acosta can, uh, can establish a little bit of respect here from, from his opponent, Giron. Um, you see how he's throwing that jab, too, Acosta is? Yeah. He's, he's throwing it without, uh, without any weight, without pushing off the back foot. He's just throwing it. That's why Giron doesn't have respect for it. Oh, and Giron, he's trying to, he's really trying to catch ripping. him. Really he's, ripping hard. He's trying to catch him with that overhand right, too, every time he throws that jab. 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Oh! oh! Vicious uppercut from Giron, and then it follows up with hooks to the body. Another hook to the body. Oh, Giron looking real, real sharp, slugging away real at that one. Oh! oh! Slips it when comes to uppercut. No, no, says Acosta. Didn't hurt me. Often means, yeah, it did. That means it hurt. Yeah. But, you know, look at him put his head down. He's He said, oh, it's a big right hand himself. It just doesn't seem to have the same pop. You know, again, saying that you want to throw harder shots and, and getting and, in there and against a guy it. like Giron and throwing those harder shots can be a bit of a precarious situation there. Hoop. Every shot, Giron You see the throws. difference in the way Power. Acosta throws his punches, he's throwing his arms. Now when Giron throws, you see his whole body goes with him. Yeah, you see the hips turn, you see That's the right. feet plant and turn into those punches as where Acosta seems to be throwing more from the shoulders. But credit to Acosta, he's hanging in there and he's, he's, keep, he's keeping himself busy. Yeah, definitely. He has lost a 10 round decision before back in 2018, has Acosta to Enoch Paulson. So he's definitely durable, we know that for a fact. But every I shot, don't think it's a good idea shot. for Acosta to stay that close to Giron. Giron, whose every shot you can hear echo through the whole arena. Especially, you know, the lack of crowd at these events here, keeping everybody safe, being able to still promote and display high-level boxing in these crazy times. By keeping everybody safe here, we're, we're still holding these events for you guys Ooh. to stream live at home on Best in Boxing, Fight Up TV. Gotta, gotta commend uh, the King calmness, Gio and the calmness of Giron. Even though Acosta is in front of him throwing multiple punches, he's just calm. Yeah, he hasn't been, lost. He hasn't lost oh, control. And big those shots. big those shots landed big by shots. Giron. That's what oh, he's waiting for. Man, I, I'm just uh, at. Uh, like at all, mouth, mouth open seeing Guadalupe Acosta eat these shots like it's nothing right now. And this is barely the second round if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, round two, about 10 seconds left in the second round of this exciting co-main event, 10 round, super featherweight. Whoa! Boys exchanging after they hear that 10 second clap. You see the way Acosta keeps uh, falling forward when he throws our hog punches? He's not sitting down on the punches. Mm. He's not turning them over He's there. not turning his hips. He's not using the, 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 the weight off his back foot. He's just throwing them. So when he gets hit, he's off balance. He so doesn't have the right stance right now. Now, do you, I mean, is it, is, it, is it possible that he just might not possess the ability to throw the punches like that, you know? It's, it's, Maybe he's a numbers guy, and that's just kind of his style. And he said he's been working on the power, but you know it's hard to change your style, and it's it hard is. to, to, it's, to it change your... It definitely your, is. It's like a golfer. You try to change your swing halfway through your career. It's not an easy thing to do. Right. And But like he mentioned, he, he needs to increase his power punches. And from what we're seeing right now, that is the case. That is the case because he's throwing multiple punches, but those are... Um, tippy taps, yeah. really. And, and on compared on, to what yeah, Giron is on throwing, on the reverse for Giron, every shot you hear blocked or landed, you can hear echo throughout the whole venue. And as we go into this third round, take a look at that action from the second round here. What do you see in there, Dylan? I'm seeing Giron receiving some punches from Acosta, but not worried. And him throwing the harder punches. You see that? Yeah, yeah. And we'll see if that Real calm. third round here of this super featherweight bout. I am Brandon Kyle alongside Dylan Miranda as we call Best in Boxing presented by Boris Tecca in association with King Geo Promotions here live on Fight Hub TV. Man, been a great card so far. Hope everyone at home is enjoying this feast of professional boxing we provided here for you on this holiday weekend. Looks like uh, Acosta's uh, corner has kind of let him know, hey, might not be uh, doing so good right now on the cards. We need to really start to turn it up Good here. left hook by Costa, though. Costa really turn, turning up the energy here. Looks like he's got plenty of juice going into this third round. One thing we do have to think about is the fact that Giron has been throwing the power shots, and he's been busy. That can, you know, he's going to get tired throughout the throughout the fight. This is a 10-round fight. Yeah, yeah. And, we'll, and we know Acosta is a very durable fighter. As and now you we see him absorb punches like that. Yeah, but so far, Acosta has been eating those punches and coming forward with his own uh, combinations. Like that one right there, that was good. One, two, three. Yeah, he's definitely being 
uh, effective with his combination punches as far as landing. It might not be throwing uh, with great power, but definitely hitting the mark as you see the redness of the, uh, the face of, of, of Giron start to swell here on the right side. Acosta is doing a fantastic job when he's keeping that distance and he's throwing multiple punches, keeping Giron busy. It's when he stops to take that breather inside and in, in, inside the guard of Giron where he receives punches. But right now, he looks like he's controlling the punches. Yeah, really uh, changed things up a little bit. He's coming forward. They're shoulder to shoulder here. These boys are phone booth fighting now. And uh, oh, man, Acosta that's a good combination, nice combination right put there. together by, by uh, uh, Acosta as he pushes Giron back to the ropes. Giron starting to look at him like, wow, what do I got to do to get you to back up? I'm hitting you with all these shots. Oh. That vicious uppercut body hook there by Giron. A good body shot by Giron. Oh. And, and good straight jab by Giron. But Acosta always comes back, and you know, you gotta appreciate he's answering back these shots. He's trading two, three shots for one big shot. Oh, Giron really winding up for these hooks each, now, Dylan. Each one of those hooks is taking gas out of his tank. Oh, big oh. right body hook, left hook upstairs, that left hook. That had to hurt. Put, and good uppercut by Giron as well. Put up. Oh, and another one. Big time stamp on the face there. Big blood oh, we flowing. Oh, blood coming out the nose. Oh, that, that's really bad bleed going and on from the gushy. nose of a cuss. He's already starting to wipe it. You can tell it's bothering him. Man, big shot landed. The blood is trickling all over the gloves of Giron as he pushes his opponent back with 10 seconds left in this third round. Oh, barely misses a big left hook. Oh, my. Oh, my. What a oh, vicious man. round. What a round. What a vicious round of boxing there, Dylan, in that third round of this 10-rounder. And I was going to tell you before that that uh, the nose injury happened. I think Acosta has found his reach. He's found his tempo. This nose injury could change things. It's only round four. Yeah, very unfortunate, especially, you know, what, what ha what's it like when your nose swells up with blood and you can't breathe out of your nose? Obviously, you're going to have to breathe out of your mouth, but opening that mouth is going to put you at big risk for taking damage and getting possibly getting knocked out if you take a big shot to the chin, right? That's right. What Acosta has to do is do what he was doing successfully the, the, the previous round, which is throwing at a distance and stepping back when Giron tries to come in with those wide, strong hooks because those are strong hooks, man. But he's throwing them wide. Yeah, a couple times he missed. He feels like an inch left, an inch right, an inch up, an inch down. That's right. And it could be good night for Acosta. But Acosta's doing a good job of mixing length and boxing in. But ah, that that was a big shot. The nose is still just it's still dripping leaking blood. like a sieve right now. You the swelling on the right eye of Acosta, uh, swelling as well on the right eye of Giron. Man, look at Giron. Talk he's about, ready. like I said what I, earlier, uh, he's like a, a, a little shark when he smells blood in the water. And uh, there's definitely some blood in the water right now as we go to this fourth oh. round of this co-main event. I'm Brandon Kyle, looks like Dylan Miranda, best in boxing, bringing another great card here in association with Boris Tekka and King Geo Promotions. Great night of matchmaking done by Saul Rios here from Boris Tekka Boxing. Oh, you can hear that shot hit like a shotgun shell. Oh, went look off. at that hip movement by Giron. Love that Canelo style slip and rip that Giron is is employing here in this fourth round. He's, you see him throw that uppercut. If he gets that uppercut, it's a good night. Yeah, and it might have been that uppercut in the last round that caused that leak. Might have been. You know, he, I know he hit him with a big uppercut and, a, and some, some good hooks. Not sure which one. Oh, 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 he's knocking him around the ring like a rag doll now. Oh, big body shot. After that, left hook lands and wobbles back. Acosta, Acosta wiping his nose again. That's really bothering him. Oh, my. Oh, and the good overhand right oh, by, by Giron. Good he, he's Lord. tearing him apart at this point. Back and forth. Boxing is not a game. Therefore, you do not play boxing. This is a fight, ladies and gentlemen. And they are going back and forth. Look at the heart on Acosta going forward no matter what. Big heart. Big heart. Shoulder to shoulder, taking body shots, ripping back. Oh, that uppercut barely misses by Giron. El Bravo is in there smelling that blood. He's probably tasting that blood He's right now, too. Because it's all well. over the place. Both fighters look like they got painted red. 
I like they do the bulls in the arena when they have the bullfights here. Both men painted red here, but with the blood of Guadalupe Acosta. Acosta four needs to throw in. some uppercuts because Giron is kneeling down to throw. He's, he's, he's scratching down to throw those hard punches. You see right there? He needs to catch him with an uppercut right there. Uppercuts are coming, but they are all coming from Giron. From Giron, yeah. Big shot thrown by Giron this entire fight. Slips, rips a nice uppercut. Speaking of, oh, there's that uppercut. Good from, uppercut. From Guadalupe, but then each uppercut one himself. By Giron. I, I doubt Guadalupe wants to be anywhere near uppercut range right now. His shorts are starting to absorb the blood. You can see it is leaking all over. Even the back of Giron has the oh. blood of his opponent. So much blood. Acosta is slipping in his own blood here now. Wow, what a war these two are going through. What heart both men are showing. But, man, Giron is just throwing big bombs, big bombs, and hasn't been able to, to wobble too hard Acosta. But, man, you, uh, you assume one of these shots, if it lands, it's going to do some major damage, possibly put down Acosta. But showing all the kinds of heart, a, a mutual little display. It's like, oh, big mistake I feel like Acosta just made. I saw him just blow his nose. Uh, I, I understand, right? When you blow your nose. That when, could be an issue. It's bad, right? Yeah. It swells up. And it's the worst thing you can do, right? As a boxer to blow your nose like that. Oh, he spits the blood on the on the gravel floor of this bullfighting arena as, here at Nuevo Torreo. As we have the doctor and the paramedics checking him out. Looks like they are checking just to make sure that they can contain this blood. I mean, it, there's no cut. It doesn't look like the nose is too swollen or, you know, or sideways. Or moved to either side, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you can see that big break, and, and that can be a reason uh, to stop the fight. But it doesn't look like that. They're going to take the big cotton swabs and, and see if they can try to control this leaking. Dylan, let's take a look at the replay of that last one. Oh, big vicious hook right there, Dylan, from, from Giron there. You see the tail of the fight, Giron coming in on the inside and throwing those hard punches through an uppercut right there. And he's attacking the body after the uppercuts as well. Yeah, I like how he follows up. Mm -hmm. He either starts with the body and finishes up or starts with the up and finishes with the body here. Very, very... Real smart fighter. Yes, intelligent fighting there. He's a, he's a boxer, but he's also definitely a brawler. Oh, oh nice left hook good by, left by Costa. Costa. But man, will anything earn the respect? of Rene El Bravo Quiron. He takes a shot, comes back even harder. I hear these body shots. It, oh, it sounds like a 12 body. gauge going off in the back whenever he lands these shots. But man, Guadalupe Acosta will not be denied. He keeps coming forward, keeps throwing punches here. Blood or no blood, he does not care. Nose could possibly be broken. It is not deterring him from moving forward. And again, like you said, big power shots. You throw in them from Giron, that might start to empty gas tanks later on in these 10 round fights. Yeah, because you know what? Right now he's taking more, more, uh, more and more time to come in and throw those power shots. Maybe uh, taking a little a break in this uh, fifth round. This is about the halfway point coming up here in the fight after this round. So maybe he's taking a little bit of a breather and uh, knowing that, man, maybe I'm not going to be able to put Acosta out with one big shot. Maybe I need to, to conserve my energy. This might go a bit longer than I expected it to after I landed those big shots early. And you see Acosta, man, even though he's a much longer fighter, doing pretty good on the inside right now. Yeah, he's staying busy. And, and what he's been doing when, when uh, Giron puts a lot of effort on those punches he's taking a little step back like like he did right now where he can counter and possibly put an end to the fight great shots coming from both fighters here speaking of great shots global sports streaming crew is getting some great shots of this action here at this beautiful nuevo torreo all good up fighting arena here in the heart of tijuana as we see these guys in the middle of the ring exchange. What what 
bravery, I should say, for El Bravo. But, I mean, I think even Acosta's showing more bravery here, eating these shots and continuing to come forward. Oh, yeah, and you see him um, with his mouth open. He's breathing through his mouth right now. I think his nose is just out of the game. Comple completely plugged up at this point. You, you can't, uh, you know, expect anything else with that much blood coming out of the nose. There's no way he can breathe out of it, and if he tried to, probably would only make it worse. Oh, yeah, he painted the entire ring with that oh, nose. Oh, 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 good body shot by Giron. Guys, I, I feel like taking a knee after just looking at these body shots land. I don't know how Acosta stands up through all this. He's got the heart of a champion for sure. Definitely. Definitely showing that heart right now. Oh, good one too by Acosta. And good body shots. He's, he's going one, two upstairs, one, two downstairs. Now maybe, uh, oh, 10 seconds oh. left here this fifth round. Moving on. Oh, big shot from Giron. Giron is really trying to stamp this fifth round with big shots on Acosta after Acosta had a pretty good round. Barring all of these shots he's, he's eaten already, he's still coming forward. Still aggressive with his shots. Still willing to fight on the inside with Giron. Wow, 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 wow. What a fight we have. That just shows the heart of a tough Mexican fighter right there. And both fighters, but Acosta... Eating the shots he's eating. His corner desperately trying to wet a rag to wipe the face here. Acosta, uh, have Acosta. Has, Acosta has received some tough, tough punches, man, and he keeps coming forward. Oh, here's some of these exchanges, Dylan, from that last round. Those big body shots right there landed for Giron at the end of the round. Oh, good left hook by Giron. And that's the tail of the tape where Acosta's throwing multiple punches. But Giron is moving side to side, and he throws those hard left hooks, hard right hooks. As you were saying, yeah, that's that. He needs to maybe throw a little bit more power, but I mean, he doesn't care about range at this point. You know, we assume that much taller fighter would try to keep range, but that was out the window pretty early in this fight, as we are halfway through this scheduled ten rounder super featherweight wow. fight here between El Bravo, Rene Teles Giron, and the uh, Navy Blue, the Mexico on the back of his shorts there. You see the light blue shorts for Guadalupe Acosta. 27-year-old Acosta taking on the young gun, 21-year-old El Bravo Giron. He had a good one too right there, where he jumped in, jumped out. That's what he has to do with, with a fighter like Giron. Now, one, two, boom, boom. Would it be, would it be a good idea for Acosta to start to throw some body shots? Because he hasn't really gone to the body very much. Is it? We're halfway through here, you know, talking about trying to take the juice out of Giron. I mean, I know you, you might be putting yourself at risk to try to drop low against a guy like Giron, though. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? I think he it, it he could do it if he disguises it with a combination. One, two, body. Finish to the body. Finish After to the body. Quick one, two. Because he's already conditioned Giron to expect punches up top. He hasn't really thrown punches to the body. Yeah. But I know it's difficult with a more compact fighter um, to, to land those body yeah, shots. Yeah, because you see how, how he has his guard kind of low? It protects his body and it protects his head. Yeah. That's the benefit that he has of being a, a, a smaller, more compact fighter. More yeah. compact fighter. Yeah, you do see a slowing of Giron now after all those power shots. As you mentioned, Dylan might be possibly starting to wear on the gas tank of Giron throwing so much power early in this fight. Of course, and that's the danger is that they have to calculate, they have to put into their, their own equation of how this fight's going to go. Because right now, you see those body shots, they don't have the same crisp, that same snap yeah, you that do they hear. used to have. You do hear that the... the, 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 the. And Acosta has already survived that fury. That, that strong get on. I'll tell you what, I, I, is it somewhat intimidating to hit someone with your best shot and they still keep coming forward? I mean, what your mind has to at one point ha start to say, what, can I can I hurt this guy? I mean, you know, because he's hit him with so many shots that you would assume would back him off and they haven't yet. Yeah, but you know what? It's been the same shots over and over, so he needs to mix them up and he, he needs to disguise them. Because I wonder, even, even though they're landing, Akosa can see them, so he can kind of smother those punches prepare for the impact prepare for them and take some damage off of them nice you, jab there from, from both fighters but man Acosta is starting to pour it on right now he's really pushing Giron back against the ropes as I say that Giron is able to get himself off the ropes and they're now exchanging the middle of the ring sixth round of this 10 rounder scheduled for 10 
We'll see if it goes there. The way these two guys are going, if it goes 10, geez. I see Acosta taking taking the edge now. Yeah, you see him start to turn you the tide a little bit here. Oh, Ten yeah. seconds left here in that sixth round, and you see Acosta push forward. Giron's almost fighting himself off the ropes as opposed to fighting on the ropes there. Wow, you see a deep breath from Giron. You start to see a little bit of, again, he has a look in his, in his eyes, almost of like, what do I have to do? I hit this guy with my best shots. He's still coming forward. Sometimes when a, a, a you know a warrior has set his mind to something, as it seems Acosta has done. Oh, there's that blow again as we see Acosta trying to clear his nose. Blood obviously bothering him, but not bothering him enough to deter him from coming forward and throwing bombs. Speaking of bombs, let's take a look at the last round action here. Dylan, these guys are, are going back and forth, but it seems like Acosta's starting to turn the tide a little bit. Yeah, you see him taking control in this exchange. And at that distance is where he does the most damage. It's when he gets close to Giron that he takes those, those shots to the body, shots to the head. Yeah, you know, Acosta probably took that round, and it might be the first very clear you know, round victory for Guadalupe Acosta. But they have been close rounds back and forth. But you see as the second half of the fight progresses, Acosta seems to be stealing that momentum a bit. Giron looks like he had a nice rest though and he's looking like he's sharp again here going in to this seventh round of a scheduled 10 round super featherweight match here between El Bravo Rene Teles Giron in the dark blue shorts, light blue shorts worn by Guadalupe Acosta. Yeah, we have to see what the gas tank of of Giron is because right now he's he's taking a step back and look at Acosta staying busy, moving side to side. I'll tell you what, I, uh, both of them have, have, have been 10 rounds and experienced that before, but I doubt that either of them have done 10 rounds like this here on Best in Boxing in Tijuana, Mexico at the Nuevo Torreo bullfighting arena here. So many classic fights happen in Tijuana and we see more classic fights occurring here today on Best in Boxing. Bringing you the best in boxing during these difficult times. Free for you to stream. Broadcasting in both English and Spanish. All boxing fans across the world can enjoy. Wonderful display of high level, top caliber boxing. We see a little bit, a little bit of a slowdown from both fighters here. From both of them, yeah. Maybe, maybe both of them starting to feel the effects of all these punches and, and big shots they've traded back and forth so far in this fight. And they've both definitely earned each other's each other's respect. Oh, definitely. I, I don't think uh, Giron had very much respect early in the fight, but uh, you could see the the eyes have changed differently, and you could tell he understands that he has one tough son of a gun in front of him in Guadalupe Acosta. And they're exchanging right now. They're going back and forth. A little body, body straight there from Acosta. Giron is way, way, way less aggressive than he has been early in the fight. You can see maybe it's starting to wear on him. He's really picking less shots here. And uh, the shots aren't making the same sound when they land that they were earlier in the fight, Dylan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, can, can you get a second win when you take a little break in between, you know, in the middle of a fight or whatnot? We've seen many pro fighters do it before. You you, you definitely can, Brandon, but uh, it's it's risky, especially with a fighter like Acosta that's on you. He's staying on you and he's staying busy. He's throwing a lot of punches. At any moment, any punch could end the fight. But we see Giron going after Acosta right now after hurting him with a body of, shot. Yeah, maybe his little uh, break he took the last round and a half is starting to pay off here because you see Giron coming forward now with those big heavy shots once again. But again, it's, it's they're fewer and far between. And look, starting to miss big shots now, Dylan. Oh, oh good big straight right, right hand by Giron. Oh, and another one, two in a row, land on Acosta. Oh, oh, and the referee doesn't even do a count. He looks one time in Acosta's eyes, and Acosta is finished with Whoa, that. fight. KO victory oh out my of nowhere. God. So I guess that answers my question. That little break, that little time off he took in the last round, did Giron really benefit into him because he came and he finished the job here in this eighth round. Wow. Seventh round of, of this ten-round fight. And as we see Giron go over there and check up on his opponent, 
Giron did not have respect for his fighter at the beginning. We see him checking up on him now. This is what boxing is about, man. Both these guys got to know each other inside that ring. Congratulations to Giron. Fantastic job by Acosta. All right, let's take a look at that. Fantastic finish by El Bravo Giron here. What is going on? He's pushing him to the ropes and, and, and lands one big right hand, Dylan. Slips a one, two. Whoop. Oh. And lands a second big right hand, puts him straight to the canvas. Dumbfounds Acosta with that right hand. And you know what? It was, it was that wide right hook hand that he was throwing throughout the fight. He finally got it to be where he was intending to put it, and it did his job. It did its job all right. Another vicious KO victory for the up-and-coming rising star in boxing. El Bravo Rene Teles Giron improves his record to 15-1 and one with nine KOs. Very entertaining style, very effective style. Let's take one more look at that vicious KO victory, guys, as we see a shot of the... Very brave, very, very, I mean, just impressive heart of Acosta in the corner, smiling already. That's a worrier he, right I, there for I think for he you. realized, you know, he got caught, but, man, he was he was bringing it back. Um, and uh, it's, it's always unfortunate to see a fighter go, go down like that and get hurt, but it uh, looks like he's okay now. Um, you know, the referee didn't take much time as we see that slow motion knockdown here. There's the final Ooh. punch of the fight. It was right on the button with the right hand. That was a very quick, short right hand that landed right where it needed to. I'm going to go. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end officially with a time of 2 minutes, 59 seconds in round number 7. Tenemos a tiempo oficial, 2 minutos 59 segundos en el séptimo asalto. Declare your winner by the way of KO victory. Su vencedor por la vía del knockout, Querétaro, Querétaro y House of Boxing, San Diego, California, USA. René El Bravo Telles. Y también fuerte reconocimiento para su rival de Aguascalientes, Guadalupe Acosta. Congratulations to both fighters for stepping into that ring. Giron. I'm here with your winner, Rene Tellez Giron, as they pay respects to each other. Rene, wow, what a fight. Here, I'll let you get dressed here, represent your, your boxing club here. What a fight that was. Uh, Rene, it was big time shots being traded the whole fight. It seemed like uh, he didn't really earn much respect from you early in the fight, but uh, later on in the fight, you had a look in your eyes like, what do I got to do to put him out? Well, we found out what you had to do, and that was land a big right hand. Was there any point in the fight where you thought to yourself, man, what do I got to do to hurt this guy? Pues, fue un rival grande. Sabíamos que iba a ser una pelea fuerte. Este... Pero para eso nos trabajamos muy duro. Este, no creíamos que fuéramos a llegar tan lejos, pero me sorprendió más él, la verdad, por su valentía. Este, quiero agradecer a Frank, a, a mi familia y todo mi equipo que me apoya allá en Querétaro, Fitness Sport, Jimena Arellano y a mi coach, Half House de Boxing. Este, estamos muy orgullosos de esta victoria y vamos a ir por más. Well, we understood that he was a high volume puncher. And when he came in, we thought we would stop him a little bit earlier, but uh, he took a shot and he showed he was a valiant warrior. But uh, yeah, he just wants to thank his, his manager, Frank Espinosa, his family back in Querétaro and House of Boxing and everybody that took part in this camp.
Yeah, that was a beautiful display of boxing. We've seen you take people out with the left hand. Now we see you take people out with the right hand. You obviously possess power in both hands. Uh, what, going back to the gym now after this wonderful victory, what do you plan to work on to add to your game for your next fight? Regresando al gimnasio que vas a trabajar, a hacerte más mejor en el gimnasio y para otra pelea, ¿qué piensas a trabajar más? Tenemos que trabajar más la contundencia, los golpes, más movimiento de cintura para estar más completos. Sabemos que pegada no nos falta y si y si sí, pues hay que hacerla todavía más fuerte para cualquier rival que nos toque. We're going to go back. We're going to work on some head movement. You know, uh, you understand we have power in both hands, but in, there's different levels to this stuff. So the object is to hit and not get hit, and that's where we're going to go back. And he's, he's ready to start working and, and uh, with the help of Frank Espinosa, move on up the ranks. Well, that's wonderful, guys. And what an exciting fight that was. What a great performance, great cave of victory. Guys, let's hear it one more time for your winner tonight's bout, Rene El Bravo Giron. People just don't know what we go through. All the time away from family, hours of road work, fighting through the pain of training. You know, people just don't understand how tough this life is. People ask me then, why do it? Simple. I want to be the best in boxing. Follow Best in Boxing on YouTube, where the future stars of boxing fight. All right, guys, you got to stay sharp. You know, you're going to go out Friday night. You're going to go try to pick up the ladies at the club one day again. Stay sharp. That's how you stay sharp. Even through quarantine, still got to stay sharp. And when you're ready for that fresh dew, got to hit stay sharp. Baba shop, guys, right there. And Pacheco, tequila, guys, it's all about having a good time safely. And you can do so with the wonderful tequila that provided by Pacheco Tequila. Check them out on IG. Got KR27 Group. Guys, anytime you need that representation, guys, got to check out KR27 Group. International flavors, guys. Spice up any of your meals, guys, up in the Bay Area, or you can order online there. Check them out, guys. Hit up international underscore flavors on Instagram. But if you don't want to do the cooking, you can go ahead and hit DJ's Tri-Tip and Barbecue. They'll do the cooking for you. So you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy IG DJ's underscore Tri underscore Tip. You're not feeling like Tri-Tip? Maybe you're thinking about tacos. Well, check out Tacos Don Hugo. They will fulfill all your taco cravings. Check them out on IG at Tacos underscore Don Hugo. Need some sports representation? Combat sports representation is possible. Just got to hit up Combat, Sport, Combat Sports Collective and CombatSportsCollective.com. And uh, after that fight that you have, after you get represented by Combat Sports Collective, you hit up Pizza Factory. Everybody knows after that weight cut, whole pizza sounds good. So hit up that Pizza Factory, and they will take care of you. Well, I was supposed to fight for this same title a couple months ago, but for some uh, the uh, reasons out of my control was uh, fell off. So as a fighter and slash promoter, the opportunity was presented and we took advantage of the opportunity. And, uh, you know, now we're here fighting for the, the WBF International Lightweight title. Pues es, es, es una motivación muy grande, una emoción muy grande. A mí al momento que me, que me ofrecieron la pelea por el campeonato este, pues me sentí mucha felicidad y muy motivado de, de ir por este campeonato. I respect anybody I wanted to in the world. Uh, as a fighter slash promoter, I don't want to take away this from the fans, from myself as a challenge, and I don't want to cheat nobody. So I picked Jose Luis Roa as my next opponent because he's a tough opponent. He only has one loss early in his career. Other than that, he's knocked out most of his opponents. Um, you know, and I'm just... I'm just here f for the challenge and uh, and looking to bring a, a great show to, to all the fans and to myself tomorrow night. Pues no un error porque pa aquí en este deporte la verdad pues no se sabe. Uno siempre quiere ir sobre el mejor obviamente para ser mejor. 
y entonces pues a lo mejor es, es la decisión que, que él tiene de ir con alguien bueno para, para calarse o ser mejor y entonces pues mmm, nomás mi pregunta, me pregunto yo ¿a poco no se me les haría tan fácil o, o algo así para elegirme como su rival? You guys know me, I, I, I don't sit here and cherry pick, uh, especially this stage of my career. I could have picked anybody in the world to fight in this main event and look good, but there's there's no fun in that. There's no challenging yourself in that. You're not challenging yourself. You're taking the, you're taking away from the crowd, from the fans, an awesome fight, you know. Um, as a fighter slash promoter, my job is to get the best fights available. Sí, sí, así es. Venimos muy motivados y con todo para ganar, para llevarnos ese campeonato. Primeramente Dios y pues ojalá se vaya con nosotros y sí, pues es, es el objetivo, llevárnoslo. People just don't know what we go through all the time away from family hours of road work, fighting through the pain of training. You know, people just don't understand how tough this life is. People ask me then, why do it? Simple. I want to be the best in boxing. Follow Best in Boxing on YouTube, where the future stars of boxing fight. Making my own promotion company has been one of my goals since I started watching boxing, not fighting. Um, but uh, it's been one of my goals to become a, a boxing promoter. Um, you know, I see a lot of these fighters, they don't have any help, any proper advice. And I've learned a lot uh, throughout the years. So my goal is just to help out these fighters and, uh, you know, look for that superstar in, in boxing, your next superstar. Being a promoter and, and also being a fighter and having my first event as the main event is, is you know, it's off the bucket list, you know? And it, it's pretty dope because it's my first event. I'm able to do this as my first event. Um, you know, uh, it's boxing, you know? Um, and it's a beautiful sport, and I just want to, you know, be able to showcase my talents to, to the world. And, um, and also, as a promoter, look for fighters that don't have that opportunity So my, like I said, my goal is just to, to look for those fighters that are very, very good, but they don't have that proper advice and promote them as well. Personally, it's not a challenge to me promoting and, and training at the same time. There's 24 hours in a day, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of things you can do. You just got to be disciplined. You, gotta, you just can't be you know, half-assing it. If not, you're not going to do well on either side. Um, at the end of the day, not just anybody can, can be a boxing promoter. Right? There's a lot of fighters that have tried it and they haven't succeeded just because that's, you know, unfortunately that's all they are. They're a fighter. They don't have that business mentality. This is not my first business path in my, in my, in my life. I've done a lot of businesses, businesses in the outside of boxing. And uh, like I said, boxing is just my next, my next path currently in my career. Huge thank you to, to Saul Reels for letting me co-promote with him. He's a really good friend of mine. I met him a couple years ago. He's a, uh, He's just in it like me. He's doing it. He's trying to help out, get this, this exposure to people uh, through Best in Boxing, uh, Global Sports Network, Fight Hub. He's just, he's just trying to get all this uh, exposure to, to people that don't know these fighters and, and possibly give them that big wreck in their career. Uh, Saul is a very great, great friend of mine. And then I'm full looking forward to co promoting this, this event tomorrow with them.
Wow, what an exciting night of fights it's been here in Tijuana, Mexico, and we are ready for our main event, a 10-round lightweight bout. On the line is a WBF international title between Giovanni Gonzalez and Jose Luis Roa. Gonzalez, 30 years old, five years younger is Roa at 25. A little bit of a height advantage for Roa, two inches, 5'8", two. Gonzalez is 5'6". Both men weighed in at the weight limit of 135 pounds. A quite significant reach advantage for Jose Luis Roja, 69 and a half inches to the 63 inch reach of King Gio Gonzalez. And uh, we are excited about this tape. Uh, what do you think it needs to happen here for each fighter to be victorious in this 10 round title fight tonight, Dylan? Jose Luis Roja is the, the longer fighter. I don't know how successful he's going to be keeping Giovanni Gonzalez at a distance. We've seen him before, Giovanni. He has a good hip movement, the good in and out. Um, I'm not sure if, if Giovanni Gonzalez's inside game is as good as Jose Luis. So that's the key to winning right there. Well, let's take it to Pablo Flores and see. Uh, we're gonna take it. And it's possible by Boristeca Boxing Promotions and King Geo Promotions. Tenemos un invitado muy especial. Él es medallista de plata en las Olimpiadas de Munich 72. He's a former silver medalist from Munich 1972 and a former world champion, ex campeón mundial. Un orgullo mexicano, Alfonso Zamora. A huge shout out to him as we have Jose Luis Roa already inside of the ring. He didn't want to wait for Pablo. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go right now. From Stockton, California, USA, Giovanni King Gio Gonzalez. He came out robed up, ready to go, but King Gio just make his way to the ring here. Seen him on Best in Boxing several times. He's a fan favorite, super exciting fighter. Can really do so many things in there. He's got good defense, good head movement, very fluid fighter. Says he'll do whatever it takes. He'll let the fight kind of dictate the style in which he fights with. Let's Ladies take it to pop. Gentlemen, it's time for boxing and it's time to rock and roll. This is your main event of the day. Set for 10 rounds of boxing for WBF International Lightweight Championship. Damas y caballeros, este es el combate celar de esta tarde. 10 rounds por el campeonato peso ligero internacional de la Federación Mundial de Boxeo. And it's sanctioned by the WBF president and also the Tijuana Boxing Pro Wrestling and MMA Commission, Howard Goldberg and Carlos La Bastida. Supervisor in attendance, Supervisor in turno de Ensenada, Max Zuniga La Bandera. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces, de Tijuana, Baja California, Manuel Rincón y Carlos de la Rocha. De Los Mochis, Sinaloa, el Dr. Román Cruz Olaiz. And your referee in charge of the action, su referee para este combate, el Internacional, y Profesor Juan José Ramírez. Ahora bien, amigos aficionados que nos siguen a través de la señal de VIP, The Best in Boxing, Fight Hub TV en YouTube. Estamos en vivo desde el nuevo toreo Don Carlos Bowser desde la frontera más visitada del mundo. Tijuana, Baja California, México. ¡Ajusten sus cinturones! In prison first. The fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears black trunks with gold trim. He officially weighs in 133 and a half pounds. Presentando ustedes el esquina azul con pantalón color negro con oro con un peso de 133 y media libras. 
in 12 professional bouts. He stands with a record of nine victories, one defeat, one draw, and six of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de nueve victorias, una derrota, un empate, y seis de esas victorias por la vía del knockout de la ciudad que capturó el sol, la capital baja californiana, Puritito Mexicali, José Luis And his opponent across the ring set in the red corner. He wears straight trunks with white and red. He officially weighs in 134 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja. Vistiendo pantalones en color gris con rojo y blanco. Con un peso de 134 libras. In 16 professional bouts. He stands with 10 victories against 5 losses, 1 draw, and 8 of those wins by the, coming by the fast way of the knockout. Presenta un record. De 10 victorias, 5 derrotas, un empate y 8 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. From Stockton, California, USA. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing con ustedes, Giovanni King Gio Gonzalez. And now with the final instructions, con las indicaciones finales, su referente internacional. Juan José Ramírez, 10 rounds, 10 asaltos. Pelea presentada por Policía Capaz en Promotions en asociación con King Geo Promotions. Muy bien, ya le di las reglas. Vamos a ver. Dense la mano, vamos a la esquina, choquen los guantes y Dios los bendiga. Siempre protegidos los dos. Here we go, folks. A 10-round bout scheduled for the vacant World Boxing Federation International Lightweight title between King Gio, Giovanni Gonzalez, in the, I guess they would be uh, with gray shorts here with the red uh, tassel there, taking on Jose Luis Roja. He's in the black shorts with the gold trim. I'll tell you what, these are definitely some championship shorts these guys are wearing here today, Dylan. Oh, yeah. These guys knew how important this, this fight is for this WBF lightweight international title. Good jab war to start off the round. I expect super high level from both of these guys in this fight. Tons of experience between the two here. 30 years old is Giovanni Gonzalez. Five years younger is... Jose Luis Roja, Roja sitting low, squatting on that jab. Now one thing about that jab war that they're having is that Roja it has the reach advantage. I believe it's about three or four inches. Yeah, quite a bit of a reach advantage there for Roja. So, so when they both throw that jab at the same time, Roja's landing first. So it looks like Gio's gonna have to slip his jab uh, of his opponent to land his own jab because he has quite a disadvantage when it comes to the reach. Gio kind of assessing the opponents. Whoa! Oh. Eats a punch, throws a nice overhand right. Already starting to exchange here heatedly in this first round. Both fighters, tight defense. Both glue in their hands to their head there. As they come in, Gio sometimes can let those hands kind of get low and then trust more his head movement than the hand defense here, but he's keeping those hands fairly high when he gets in range. Oh, rage. good nice right, right hand. hand. And, and, and what I think he's doing right now is that he has the reach on Roa, so he's waiting on him to throw so he can counter. He's a smart fighter, Gio is. Look yeah, at that. Definitely a lot of experience there from, from King Gio. Good jabs there from, from Gio. Very good jab war going on so far here with these boys. Nice combination by Roa. Oh, oh, nice right hand good there. Right hand. Connect with that left hand as well does Gio. Look, looks like almost kind of has a, a face of like, get back, get back. Reddening on the rows of Roa already. Very uh, nonchalant look on King Gio's face as he, as he moves forward. Now we hear the crowd coming in, shouting Gio. Like we said, he's a fan favorite here at Best in Boxing, Bodisteca promotion. Oh, these boys are right in front of us, exchanging already. Back and forth, and the uppercut barely misses, but a right oh. hand lands good for, for Giovanni. Gonzalez, Gonzalez, eat a couple shots there. Nice up, uppercut to the body there from Roa. 
A couple slips there from Gonzalez. Gonzalez holding those hands up. 10 seconds left. Opening round of this 10 round title fight. Oh, oh nice good exchange. Counter. Great, great counter shots landed at the end of that round there by Giovanni Gonzalez. Really good round there, both ways there, Dylan. And that was the first round. These guys are ready, man. They came, <laughs> they came in, took no no studying, just started off with the fireworks. I tell you what, usually there's a feel-out round in a title fight like this. That was a feel-out minute of one round, and in the last two minutes of the first round, both of these boys started going. And it looks like uh, kind of in a, like similarly to fights we've seen, it, uh, it, on this card already, you see Gio kind of looking to catch a couple punches, maybe slip and land, big counter shots coming back here. And maybe take a look at this replay. We might be able to see some of that action here. The King Gio, there it is, kind of backing up. Takes a shot or two, throws back. He's receiving punishment, but he's waiting for that. That opening. To counter with that overhand left. And he caught him about twice. Gio Vani Gonzalez actually began his own promotions company, King Gio Promotions. He's co-promoting this fight. His first event under his new banner here, following the footsteps of a Floyd Mayweather, fighting for his own co-promotion here. Smart businessman, said it's not his first business, owned several businesses before. He's, he's been in the game so long, he just said, uh, I, I, I think I could do that and do a good job of of representing fighters well and putting together good fights. So he did a, a fantastic job helping to co-promote this fight here with Bori Stick of Boxing. And now he's got to take care of business though against a very game experienced Jose Luis Roja who's coming forward more aggressively in this round. Oh, was able to avoid that counter right hand this time of, of King Gio. You know, I don't think Gio is too worried about the power that, that Ro is bringing. Based on his pre uh, previous fights, when he receives a strong punch, he starts moving around using the ring. Right now, he's staying in front and exchanging. And he said he's, he's going to need to possibly walk into the fire here uh, to take this title home. Oh. And that's exactly what he's doing, walking into the fire here as he takes a couple punches to land. Nice left hook. Left hook to the body there by Gonzalez. Gonzalez has put his head down, but Roy comes right back. Roy not backing up, not taking a step back. Good uppercut by Gio there. As Roa tries to get another uppercut of, of his own. Oh, nice nice right hand. Oh, Roa's putting together some nice combinations right now against Gonzalez. We're about halfway through this second round, this 10 round title fight here. Gonzalez lands oh, a nice good big right, right hand. Nice left hand, but he's eating a couple of shots as he's in there. These boys are right there, exchanging head to head, oh. throwing back and forth. Good Gonzalez left hook. backing up to the ropes here, taking some shots, throwing some shots back, hook to the uppercut. Holding the head down here, a little pause in the action, slight pause, very, very few pauses so far in these opening rounds of this 10 round title fight. Nice body, Good shot, body there. shot there, you heard by that throughout the arena. Non-stop action so far in this second round, Dylan. Less than a minute left here. Another good body shot lands. King Gio comes back with the right hand. Left hand, uppercut. Roa is throwing and throwing and throwing. He's putting on that pressure. But here comes Gio with a combination of his own. Gio steps Gio back, switches switch stances. Stance. I wonder if this is something he planned to do. Just briefly here, maybe to give him a different look. He's back in an orthodox stance and eating punches here from Roa. Good jab from Gio. Oh, nice oh. hook, hook. And then he comes back, does Gio with a right hand. Oh, a nice left hand from Gio. No, oh, Jose hits him with an uppercut to finish the round. Wow, Dylan, I mean, I, I hate to say it again, but these judges have a tough scoring job in front of them. It's just so back and forth. See, that's why I'm real happy that I'm sitting over here with you watching these fights. Right. I don't have to score anything because that one was tough. Although I do think that Roa took the advantage that last that last round. Maybe just, came out, the, took the, the, the first step of aggression there. Yeah, just on, a, on, on the output. We're having a similar view of, of the previous fights. 
Yeah, speaking of that back and forth action, let's take a look, Dylan. What are you seeing here in that second round of this back and forth fight? I'm seeing Acosta versus uh, Giron. Again, again. right? <laughs> I was thinking the same thing there. Roa's coming in with those, those, those furies of combinations, but every time Gio throws his combination, it's strong. It's numbers versus power here a little bit. As you said, similar to the Acosta, your own fight there. Both fighters ready to go. Sharing a look across the ring. As the sun sets here on the Nuevo Torreo, bullfighting arena in the heart of Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico. It's myself, Brandon Kyle, alongside Dylan Miranda as we call this 10 round WBF international lightweight title fight the vacant title one of these boys will walk home a champion here tonight who is it going to be will it be king geo giovanni gonzalez from sacramento i mean uh, uh, stockton california as he takes on mexicali's jose luis roa oh that was a good uppercut body good by body geo. shots there from geo oh looks like geo uh, Matt might have heard from his corner that he needs to put on some more mustard on those shots to start landing. And he's starting oh, it with a big good overhand, overhand right, right. Beautiful shot lands over the top there for Giovanni. Jose backing up to the ropes a little bit now. Looks like Gio is coming out to try to take the uh, seize the advantage here in this third round here. A minute in to this 10-round title fight. Oh. Good job by Roe keeping busy, though. He, he was definitely hurt with that previous punch. Yeah, definitely did did a little bit of a wobble there, but looks like he's fo refocused. Doesn't look too at a loss here. You can see his eyes still focused, but you can tell he's being a little bit more considerate of the power of Giovanni Gonzalez right now. Oh, oh, slips a oh. punch and lands three, four, five, six punches in a row. Good job by Roa by using the jab to set up those combinations. Saw a big exhale from Giovanni after that long combination landed by Roa. Misses barely with that right hand. Does Gonzalez. Gonzalez's hand starting to stay low. Earlier in the fight, they would come up to his forehead as he got closer to Roa. Now he's just kind of keeping him down closer to the chest waist area. Looking to utilize more head movement, I assume. Try to land some big shots here. Oh, speaking of big shots, oh. here comes Roa landing big shots against Giovanni in the ropes He's... of his own corner here. Good body shot by Gio. They're exchanging. They are definitely exchanging. That Both of them kind of high belt line, so those body shots seem to be landing over there on that belt line. Oh, oh good one too by Giovanni. With that lean back. Comes forward with the one, two, looked real good. Oh, here's oh, Gio turning right it on. Hand. 20 seconds left here in this third round. Oh, barely, barely missed that left hook. Kind of landed on the top of the head there for Gio. Gio, good right hand slip by Gio. It. Gio, rip it, using that head movement, hands down. Gives him a little Whoa. touch at the end, almost as a joke there. They laugh as they walk to their corners. Really, really exciting fight in this main event so far here today, Dylan. That's right, I'm at a loss for words right now. That final fury is, is um, had Gio coming back, but I don't think it was enough to take that round. I, I'm gonna tell you something, I cannot believe that it's barely round three. It this feels, it is, feels like they're, they're, they're more than halfway through already the way they're throwing right now. Oh yeah, and this is a 10 round fight. You start seeing some exhaustion already on the faces of both fighters. Yeah, a fight like this, you can see as we look to the corner right now of Giovanni Gonzalez. Deep breaths being taken here. Now, do you, when you're in the corner, Dylan, I mean, do you, do you like a corner that, you know, gets fiery about it as you see these, these Good guys body go shot back by. and forth here as they exchange? And there's that body shot there and another one there, right hand from Gio slipping at the end of that round. I mean, they exchange punches right there. Now I say Gio's corner doesn't really tell him much, you know, at this point in his career, you know, there's only so much you can say to really fire up a fighter. He obviously knows what he needs to do in there. And so here he goes, starting to throw some more heat, pack some more punch in those leather gloves. Does Gonzalez. 
He's trying to start faster in this round. Misses a big hook and then took an advantage of by Roa afterwards. Roa has some nice short shots on the inside. Oh, there's that big right hand. There is that big right hand that Gio's been looking to land all night. Likes to slip it and rip it. Looks like he's starting to get loose in there. Really start to feel himself is Gonzalez. He's definitely starting to look more comfortable inside the ring. Just can't get too comfortable. Not against the opponent coming forward like Jose Luis Roja. Because Roja will take advantage as we saw in that last round with combinations. And right now he's not he's not uh, staying off of Giovanni. He's keeping busy. Yeah, I tell you what, great output so far. He can tell that Gio's, the, Gio's tired. That's why he's coming in. He's smelling that blood in the in the water, and that was a good uppercut right there. Yeah, but Giovanni, a crafty veteran, you know, like he was doing in that last round, and sometimes he kind of plays possum a little bit. Maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe lulls his opponent to sleep to come in and then comes back with a one-two, so Roa has to be cautious while moving in. He's got to do it smartly because, we, as we've seen in these previous rounds, Gio will kind of fade back and then come with a big shot over the top. And that's part of the fight game, too. Yeah, you know, baiting, let them come forward, pretend. And you definitely see the art of war being displayed here with these high level, vastly experienced fighters. You see the tactics start to, start to be employed as they come back and forth here in this fourth round of this scheduled 10 rounder. Successful combinations by Roa, and those are the long punches that I want to see him throwing. Combinations at a distance, and then you step back, just like that. Good combinations go. from both fighters here. Looks like uh, you're right, Giovanni might be starting to tire out a little bit. He said he's in great shape for this fight. He said he is probably had the easiest cut he's ever had in his career, so he feels good, but... Oh, oh good big shots right. again as we talk about him maybe fading. Here he comes, and maybe that's just knowing it's, it's 30 seconds left in this fourth round here, and knowing that if he can put a stamp on the end of this round, he might be able to steal this round, because it's been kind of a lackluster round early, but now they are making up for it in these last 30 seconds. And this back and forth. They're exchanging combinations here. Ah, nice oh, hook good over the top. Baroa comes back with a cross, lands a little bit of a overhand right and another overhand right as they blow that 10 second whistle there. A little bit uh, late on that whistle as it directly preceded the bell there. You see Gio spit, look down at the ground, take a deep breath. As we look in the corner of Roa, looking pretty calm and poised in there. Looking in the corner of Gonzalez, looking a little bit more taxed from this back and forth battle. I mean, every time that Giovanni Gonzalez is throwing punches, those are hard punches. Whereas Roa over here is throwing multiple combinations, just not with the same strength that Gio is doing. Yeah, I know, and, and that makes it tough because some judges they might be looking at who's uh, throwing more and landing more. Some right. judges might be saying who's landing the harder shots. So it's difficult to, to say how this fight is going on the scorecards because it's two different styles of, of scoring here. Right. And really it is, that's, that's why we have three judges and uh, that's why we go to this replay here and see these different styles go back and forth. Big shots landed by, by Roa, but big shots also being landed with a little bit more uh, strength and power from Giovanni Gonzalez. Giovanni starting to dance a little bit around the ring, maybe gonna start using a little bit more of that in and out movement you mentioned that he that he does possess here. Oh, and he's real good at that. You see that? Just came in with the straight right, moved. Gio's a crafty boxer. He's a smart boxer. Yeah, very tricky, tricky. Yeah, you, you see, see that? He's waiting for that counter. Almost wait, he's wait, waiting for that counter. Almost wait, trying to time the the shots of his opponent so he can come back with big shots. But man, he didn't he didn't uh, avoid that shot, that, that right hand there by Roa. Roa is chasing him down instantly as, as Giovanni moves. Roa is chasing him down, looking to, to, to throw more combination. Oh, nice good body, body shot, shot by Gio. I tell you, every time Gio has an opportunity, he's taking what he can get. 
But then, as soon as he gets something on Roa, Roa comes right back with multiple punches, lands a multiple punch combination. They try oh. body shots there. Oh, nice body shots coming back from Roa. No, oh, great boxing match so far here today, Dylan, with these two high-level professionals vying for that WBF international lightweight title on the line. Five rounds into this 10-round oh. fight here. About halfway through this fifth round. About halfway through this fight. Yeah, D Dylan, you know, Rojas is seeming to find uh, uh, success in this round. W what is he doing to be able to score these punches against Giovanni? Rojas having success on Giovanni because Giovanni is, is waiting in front of him. And Roa, whenever Giovanni tries to move around, he's, he's, he's on him. He's chasing him. But he's not just chasing him without being in action. He's throwing those, those fast combinations. Oh, oh got him with that. That's a big uppercut right there. That was a strong right uppercut. And he's, he's still throwing punches, whereas some boxers like to throw a hard punch and then they wait, they wait. He's staying busy. He does not let Gio think. So and that's important for a boxer. Up. That's important for a boxer like Giovanni, who's smart and likes to move around and does his tricks and combinations. Don't let him think. Don't let him have time to set things up, to exactly. set traps. You just constantly throwing on him and make him defend. He doesn't have time to do too much thinking here. And you can see this is slowly starting to turn into a slugfest back and forth for this WBF lightweight title. So yeah, what is Gio's job or role now to, to be able to counteract these uh, constant onslaught of Roa? Right now, Gio has to stay calm, you know, not not uh, not get into a, a panic with all these punches and hit him with a strong punch. And Ro Ro there you go. Came back with a combination of his own. It seems like Giovanni is very aware of, of where they are in the round. He's coming strong in the last 30 seconds. But it seems like he might be giving away the first two, two and a half minutes of, of these rounds, which is going to make it really difficult to score here. Right. Roa so far is coming in, throwing his punches, and Gio hits him with a strong punch. He'll take a little step back, and then he comes back in. So what Gio needs to do is hit him with that strong punch and follow up, not let him go. Because Gio is hitting him with that strong punch. Roa backs away. Gio takes that as an opportunity to breathe. Don't breathe. Stay on him. Take the breath away from, from, from Roa and implement your game plan. Yeah, we'll see if Giovanni can do what you're talking about here as we go to this replay. And you see Giovanni trying to get more aggressive, throwing those hooks to the body. But Roa, as you said, comes right back on him. And it's the tempo, the tempo of the punches. Whereas Gio goes one, two, Roa's one, two, one, two. Yeah, you can see a little bit faster combinations coming from Roa. More punches and bunches, but Giovanni landing big shots when he has the opportunity. We'll see if Gio can uh, maybe add some more volume to these attacks here and counteract the high volume punching of Jose Luis Roa. We are sixth round into this 10 round WBF light international title fight here between Giovanni Gonzalez in the gray and white shorts as he takes on Mexicali's Jose Luis Roa. He's in the black with the gold shorts. Both fighters have, have shown some great skill here, but you see that heart of Roa coming out right now as he comes forward. Yeah, as we started off where we're, they were at a distance, Gio, team tends to have uh, the advantage there as he moves around, comes in, hits you, and he moves around like that. When he stops, when he lets um, Jose, you know, start teeing off, that's when he finds himself in issues. He cannot stay in there and trade with him. He's a smarter boxer. Yeah, you know, but Roa's got such a, a length advantage. He's and he doesn't let him, he doesn't yeah. let him, it doesn't leave him alone. Man. Yeah, he's not letting him think. He's not letting him move. He's not letting him breathe. And that might be a problem as this fight wears on. You, you see deep breaths coming from King Gio in between rounds. I don't see uh, Roa breathing very deeply in between rounds. Seems very relaxed in between rounds. So we'll see who uh, kind of has that endurance advantage as we go into these later rounds. Again, this is round six of a scheduled 10 round main event we have here for Best in Boxing. Boris Tech up promotions in a... Per oh, good right hand oh, by nice Gio. Oh, nice round. 
for Roas. So far, he's starting to really pour it on here. As Gio lands a punch, and then Roa comes back with 10 punches. Gio's got to throw an uppercut and move. He has to use that, that, that in and out movement that he's so good at. As he moves around to the center of the ring. Oh, nice. There's that uppercut you're looking for. Good uppercut. Oh, starting to starting to use that head movement to to slip the straight punches there of Roa is, is Giovanni Gonzalez. And he, he's great at that, especially at that distance. He's, he's in front of you, but not too close. It's when he lets Roa into that inside game right there where there's issues. And he definitely has issues getting inside here. Oh, and we see Roa starting to use some in and outs. Side steps as well. Roa really demonstrating several different skill sets he possesses in that boxing ring here tonight. This is a big fight for both of these fighters. Winning that international title from the World WBC. Boxing Federation. W, yeah, WBF World Boxing Federation international title fight here on the line. Guys, both these guys know how important this fight is for their careers. And you can see them laying it out there tonight as we move into the evening and the sun sets on the beautiful Nuevo Torreo Arena here in the coastal border city of Tijuana, Baja, California, Mexico. A hotbed of boxing for many, many years. Fortunately, able to do this wonderful fight outdoor arena. Everyone staying as safe as possible. Everyone masked up outside, sanitizing the ring in between each match. Taking all precautions necessary to make sure we provide the safest environment for these high caliber professional boxing matches. As we take a nice shot of that beautiful town of Tijuana. And then a nice look at these guys going back and forth in that last round. Trading shots. Gio takes a right hand there. It's just the numbers, it seems like. Are, it's are, the numbers. It's the numbers are just adding, starting to add up slowly for Roa. Yeah. As we move into this next round of this scheduled 10 here, we'll see if Giovanni kind of changes things up and turns it up. More of the same might not be enough to take that title home tonight. Starts off with a jab here. Seventh round, scheduled 10. WBF, international lightweight title. I'm seeing a lot of headshots right now, but they're not, I uh, hope they're not forgetting about the body. I don't think it'll be very long, but a mm. nice right hand from Gio. Gio's starting to hit the gas a little bit. Maybe realizes he might have given some rounds away to Roja. Roja, stand. True to the task, though. Slips a big right hand from Gonzalez. I like that movement by Gonzalez. He's in there. He's in front of him. He's throwing combinations, but then he moves. That's that's when he looks phenomenal, man. He goes in there, hits you, doesn't get hit. Just like that. And he's smiling. He has fun. It's, yeah, a, it's on the inside game where Jose is taking the advantage. Definitely looks like Gonzalez is giving... Uh, Jose Roa a little troubled this round. Uh, he's he's doing things a little bit different. He's more active. He's more in and out, sticking that jab more. Maybe right. That's Gio. That's Gio right there. Maybe. In out, loose, real calm. Maybe he feels like uh, he wasn't doing that enough. Maybe his corner told him he needs to get back to uh, Gio Gonzalez boxing, and that's what he's doing so far. And it looks like he's he's providing some issues here for for Roa. Oh, good right hand by Giovanni. Landed big shots Another again. Gio. Bang, bang, bang. He goes throwing big power shots is Gonzalez. Definitely some some confusion almost on the face of Roa. Almost looking like, what happened here? I was cruising along. Now all of a sudden I'm eating power shots left and right. Oh yeah. And missing shots. Has Seems like Giovanni found his tempo. Corner Roa encourages him. Vamos, vamos, they yell. Oh, uh, looked like there was a a little bit of confusion yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Gio looked at the ref as if he was he should have stopped the fight now. Gio kind of ball, balling up here. Maybe got hurt by something there, Dylan. I don't know. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't see it. But I he, didn't see what could have hurt him, the, but he looks. Definitely he looks, looks like he got hurt by something. Not sure if it was a punch or maybe a headbutt, but Gonzalez looked at the ref for help, and the ref said fight. And now he looks like he's on the ropes, and around that he looked like he was really starting to take over the round there was Gio early. 
And now, with 20 seconds left in this seventh round, you see Raw pushing Gonzalez back to the ropes. Gonzalez, it looked like something just took it out of him. Maybe it was a low blow, he thought. But man, Gio does not look like he, 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 he did in the beginning of this round at all. But there he goes, back with the big bombs. Don't look very technical, just kind of throwing away there. Interesting into that seventh and, round, Dylan. And we have to see that 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 possible that, replay. That if replay we, if we because got that. I yeah. did not see what Me it was. Either. Uh, Giovanni was controlling the the whole round. Right. He looked yeah. fantastic. And then all of a sudden, uh, something happened. He looks at the the referee and almost as if to say, "Aren't you gonna take some time for for this?" And then the referee just said, "Go." And uh, Gio looked like something it, bothered him big time in that round. It could have been a low blow. We don't know. Yeah, uh, or maybe a body shot that landed and uh, uh, Gio thought it was a low blow or was trying to get some time right. uh, from the ref, you know, for a low blow. But definitely is looking pretty tired in that ring right now as his corner wipes him down, ices his forehead, uh, and now, gives him instructions. I don't know if that last 20 seconds was enough to give Jose Roa the, the, the round. So we're going to take a look at the replay. Maybe we can see what happened here. I, I don't see anything illegal or, or foul happen. Maybe just... Maybe took a hard shot and was just trying to t to, do, to use some crafty veteran moves to get the, the referee to give him a break. But it, it could be. There was no definitive punch that said that's what hurt him. Well, here we go. They are back in it. It is the eighth round, guys. It's myself, Brandon Kyle, Ooh. alongside Dylan Miranda, as we call this 10-round title fight. And these boys understand how important these last two rounds are as you see them exchange. Giovanni Gonzalez with his back to the ropes, trying to push back. Jose Luis Roja. Roja trying to defend that forward pressure that Giovanni is starting to apply here. Giovanni might still be tired. He might still be hurt because he's he's putting pressure, but he's hugging. Like a leaning pressure yes, more than a punching pressure. Good body shot by Gio, though. You know Gio's game. We've seen him before. He's got no quit in him whatsoever, but neither does Jose Luis Roja. Complaining about that head As they butt. bump heads. Well, you see Gio starting to kind of come in and try to use that head to push back. They're getting real dirty boxing heavy here as they go shoulder to shoulder, head to head. Oh, oh. nice slip and rip there from Good Gonzalez. Right there. Getting a little bit sloppy here as these boys start to fatigue from this big time back and forth boxing war that they've both seem to commit it to now fully. Nice uppercut there on the inside from Roa. Gio pushing forward, slipping. Gio for, forward and ripping. Heart starting to come out now. You can start to see it beating in their chest. You see a little blood forming on the nose there. Look a little trickle starting to happen. I'm not sure if it's blood from Gio that's, uh, that's wiping off or if it's blood from the nose of Roa. But I definitely see someone is leaking here at this moment in the eighth round. I believe that's Roa that's that's bleeding out of his nose. So maybe a good shot landed, but you do see the fatigue start to set in in these championship rounds coming up here. Oh, good uppercut by Roa. And Roa non-stop combinations. Roa obviously in great physical condition to be able to continue to throw combinations like this after eating big counter shots, coming back, oh! Big shot from Roa over the top as Gio lands a body shot. Gio starting to kind of wing and ding these punches, not finding the mark as often as they were earlier in the fight. But I think he understands how important it is to, to really show that he is the aggressor in these last two rounds. As you see him come forward, take shots to give shots. You start to see the blood trickle again from the nose of Roa as he wipes it down here. Good jab work by Roa, keeping keeping Gio at a distance. 10 seconds left, we Go. eighth jab. round here. Big overhand misses from Gonzalez. Gio just keeps throwing, keeps throwing, keeps throwing. Whoa, whoa. Oh. that was kind of late there, but they both smile about it. It was almost as if Gonzalez kind of poked it out there, missed it on purpose, you know? It's, it's boxing. Yeah, they, they're, they they're, know. they're they playing know. in there. Yeah, you know the difference between someone trying to uh, play around and someone trying to really hurt you. And that was definitely just a little play around pop shot from, from Gio Gonzalez. But boy, does he look tired going into the ninth round. Two rounds left here in this scheduled 10-round bout for a vacant 
World Boxing Federation International Lightweight title between Giovanni Gonzalez, King Gio, taking his foray into promotion world as King Gio Promotion co-promotes this with Boris Teca Boxing. It's myself, Brandon Kyle, alongside Dylan Miranda for Global Sports Streaming, Best in Boxing. Man, what a fight as we go to this replay right now. What do you see in there, Dylan? I'm seeing Roa throwing multiple punches right now. Gio through a combination try to stop that but it's been it's been the same as uh the entire fight little wink from Giovanni to Roa before the for the bell rings to start this ninth round here two rounds left in this 10 round fight we are excited to see what's going to happen in these final two rounds as Giovanni Gonzalez dances around the ring does a little shoulder shake, he's trying to land shots. You see the focus in both fighters' eyes as they know how important this fight is, not just for tonight, but for the rest of their careers. This is a huge opportunity to become the international lightweight WBF title holder. You see when Gio starts to get loose and comfortable like that, that's when he's dangerous. He'll, throw, he'll hit you with a punch that you don't see coming, and down you go. Jose Luis, keeping that that pressure throughout the whole fight. Absolutely, man. What great conditioning uh, Roa is ex kind of exemplifying here in these later rounds. Still throwing, hasn't really reduced his output whatsoever. Does a little turn and push. Geo back, hands up. Starting to show some fatigue on his face here. But man, still throwing big, heavy shots. Oh, speaking of big heavy shots, nice right hand there from Roa Lands, and a nice oh. left hand. Oh, these boys are in the middle of the ring throwing leather. Those are good punches by King Gio right there. Yeah, you can hear them pop ringside here as they land. Oh, another big right hand. King Gio starting to land some power shots here. Maybe Roa starting to slow down a little bit here. His head movement, his defense is starting to falter somewhat here as Gio lands these huge shots coming on him. Triple. Oh. Uppercut. Good combination by Roa. Roa throwing. Feels and you know like what? that is, 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 is his key to victory, and he's obviously committing fully to throwing those major combinations there, Dylan. You were saying Roa was starting to slow down. Maybe he's not hitting as, as, as hard as he used to. Giovanni needs to capitalize on that and throw throw more, more punches. He, he needs his output to increase. Because the hard punches are there, like that straight right. He just needs to have more of them. I tell you what, though, it... Uh, Roja oh, almost like those a, body shots just, by Roja. Just constantly. Oh, oh, Another that, body, that shot. body shot. That body shot starting to put a little bit of damage there. Oh, oh, oh so Gio feels it. And by says, Gio. Oh, oh, you got a body shot. Oh. Well, guess what? I got some head shots here for you. But he's eating shots. Oh, he's both oh, over. And he pushes back to the ring. And the ropes are holding up. Roja right now has you Gio. hear the oh, sound. He got him with a shot too. Oh, no, and now Roja's coming back on Gonzalez. Gonzalez is just. Oh my God, almost oh. hypnotized in there. Gio just with the throwing, hooks. throwing with ill intent with every punch. Wow, wow, what a round. The wow. best round of, the, of this fight so far, Dylan. And we, and we still have another round. We have another round. We still have that another round. like the end of the 10th round. Oh man. Wow. I don't know who to give that round to. Man, when I think Gio has Nothing left in the tank. He gets hit with a major body shot. You could tell it bothered him. And so what's he do? Bites down on the mouthpiece and oh, yeah. throws bombs. Both Dylan. these fighters are warriors. That's why Gio has become one of a, a fan favorite here in Best in Boxing. We take a look at the exhausted Giovanni Gonzalez. He looks exhausted right now, but I guarantee you when that 10th and final bell rings, He's gonna come out throwing bombs, and I expect nothing less from Roa in this 10th and final round, too. Little smile from the corner here of Giovanni Gonzalez, no, King Gio. This is the round number 10, the last round. Ladies and gentlemen, this is round number 10, your final, your final round. Oh, here we go. Here's that exchange right there, Dylan. Look at him go back and forth. Big bombs landing for Gio as he 
and like we mentioned before, uh, bar fights. That's what that's looking like. We got another bar fight on our hands here in the form of a professional boxing match because these boys are going back and forth nonstop in that last round. And it's, it's the 10th oh. and final round, guys, of this World Boxing Federation International Lightweight title fight between King Gio, Giovanni Gonzalez, in the gray and red. He's taking on Mexicali's Jose Luis Roja in the black and gold, and they've gone back and forth the entire fight. This 10th round has started off the exact same way as they ended the ninth. Non-stop action, both corners. Roa heard Gio with the punch. Telling their fighters to come forward. He's teeing off on Gio right now. He Gio needs to get off. off the ropes. Gio's trying to recover. and. He, he does this, he, 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 he wades and waits oh, and then good, boom, throws big shots. And you look like Gio's just trying to pull back the arrow on, on a big flurry every time he's waiting. You can, oh. never, you can never count Gio out. Never count never. Gio. The way he throws, the, 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 the craftiness in which he lands big shots. But man, Roja looks like a Terminator in there, will not be denied, keeps coming forward, eating shots and throwing. He trades three, four shots for one big shot, and that might be making the difference in this fight right now, Dylan. It could be. Like we said, it depends on, on how the judges are gonna view the fight. It's the fighters square off in the center. They go back and forth again. Gio, not sure if he's just kind of waiting for the second half of the round, but he doesn't have much time left if he's trying to stamp this 10th and final round. There's about a minute left in this title fight, guys. Oh, that was a good shot by Slipping. Jose. We will see who is going to. Good one, too, by Gio. Cap this fight off with a flurry here as Roa comes forward, throwing punches. Gio throwing Ooh. big counters. Gio back Giovanni to the ropes. Fighting off the ropes. Pushes them back again. They're back in the center. Whoa, oh, big left hand lands for Gonzalez. Exchanging in the middle of the ring. 30 seconds left, ladies and gentlemen. This has been a war for this vacant WBF lightweight title. Giovanni coming forward, eating shots. Jose, constant output. 10 rounds of constant punches. Here we go, 10 seconds left. Oh. You know they're gonna let it all out right now, ladies and gentlemen. Giovanni, oh. What a fight. What a fight as the crowd stands and applauds. Wow, wow, wow. The referee collects the Scorecards from the judges as they tally the score to see who will be the next World Boxing Federation International Lightweight Champion. Will it be King Gio Giovanni Gonzalez out of Stockton, California? Or will it be Jose Luis Roja fighting out of Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico? As we... I'll tell you one thing. Wait for Who the judges. Whoever comes out being the winner, I don't think anybody at home is going to be able to complain. No, about the whole card. The Dylan. whole card. No one's complaining. It's wonderful stream brought to you by Global Sports Streaming. And let's take a look at that 10th and final round here as these boys just let it all out here, Dylan. Big shots landed by both fighters the entire fight. Nice uppercuts landed. See Roa with, with that output. Non-stop, it seemed like he was just 10 oh. rounds. Back and forth, big shot misses barely there by Gonzalez. Gonzalez obviously exhausted at the end of this fight. And that was the end of the 10 rounds there. As these guys go to the judges' scorecards to render the decision, I'm gonna join the fighters and Pablo Flores in the ring as he announces the winner of this 10 round international title fight.
Shout out to Bodisteca Boxing, King Geo Promotions, Global Sports Streaming, and Best in Boxing. As we wait for the results of the fight. Congratulations to both these fighters. As we hear the cheers from the crowd. And above all, respect. Respect from both fighters. As we take you to my partner inside the ring, Brandon. And a quick shout out to Bodisteca Boxing, King Geo Promotions. Fantastic fights tonight from previous past champions to new champions and debuts. Like my partner said, we had a mixture this fight. It was exciting from the start. We even had a white horse. Thank you to Mario Ramirez. As we view the replay of King Gio versus Jose Luis Roa exchanging in the middle of the ring. That's what this fight was. A good back and forth. Are the judges going to go for the numbers? Or are they going to go for the power shots? We don't know as we take it to Pablo Flores inside of the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has gone the distance of 10 rounds, and now we go to the judges' scorecards. Damas y caballeros, este combate se va la distancia de 10 asaltos. Por lo tanto, tenemos la decisión de los jueces. No sin antes un fuerte aplauso. Big round of applause for two warriors. King Gio González y el mi, Mirus Roa, por este gran combate. El juez, el judge, Juan Manuel Brincón. He scores it 97-93, 97-93, in favor, en favor de Gonzalez. Carlos de la Rocha scores it 97-93, 97-93, in favor, en favor de Roa. And judge, y el juez, Roman Cruz Olais, had the scores of 98 to 92, 98 92. For your winner, by the way, of split decision. Su vencedor por la vida la decisión dividida. And he is the new World Boxing Federation International Lightweight Champion, el nuevo campeón internacional de la Federación Mundial de Boxeo. Puritito Chicali. José Luis, el virus Roa. And also a big round of applause, el, también el reconocimiento para su rival, Giovanni, el King Gio González. Congratulations to Jose Luis Rua on becoming the new WBF International Lightweight Champion. I'm here with your winner, Jose Luis Roja, as he smiles for the camera after a big victory. Congratulations on a great fight. 
It looked like it was numbers versus power shots. You just had a great output throughout the whole fight, nonstop pushing and punching. You were eating some big shots, but you didn't let it deter you. Was that the game plan to come out there, establish your length, and just continue to put numbers on Geo in this championship fight tonight? Sí, sí, pues, eh, dependiendo cómo nos sintiéramos, iba a ser nuestra estrategia. Nosotros somos bajadores 100%, pero pues miramos que iba puro para adelante, pues decidimos bochearlo, movernosle y tirar bastantes golpes para poder ganar. Yeah, we had a strategy. Uh, we know that Giovanni, he always goes forward, but we decided, although because he's a strong fighter, we, we decided to box him. Yeah, there were times in the fight where it seemed like uh, Gio would start to fade and maybe you were starting to smell that you, if you pushed, you might be able to finish him. But then all of a sudden he would come back with these strong flurries of punches and kind of get you to have to step back again. Was there any time where you thought, oh, he might be starting to crack and, and, and he surprised you coming back with such strength? Sí. No, sí, sí. Sí hubo momentos en los que yo decía, ah, ya. Ya lo voy a tumbar y no, no, pues no sé de dónde sacaba fuerzas que seguía, está muy aguerrido. Igual esos peleadores me gustan, me gusta tener peleas duras y, y, y pues ahí estábamos, nos presionó, nos hizo un poquito para atrás, pero regresábamos también con todo. Yeah, there were some, certain moments that uh, I was about to knock him out, but all of a sudden I, I was thinking, where did this guy has so many power to come back? So, but well, we keep on going and we outbox him and we got the decision. Yeah, this is a big victory. You are now the World Boxing Federation International Lightweight Champion. That's got to be a great feeling for you. Is there anyone you want to thank? It's, you've had a nice career so far, and it's only getting better. Anyone want to thank out there for, your, for, for helping you in your career so far to date? Well, muchas gracias a mi madrecita que está aquí, a mis amigos de aquí de la Colonia Progreso de Mexicali, aquí entrando, aquí bajando de de aquí de, de la rumorosa aquí estamos luego luego pues gracias a ellos que están aquí fueron los únicos que vinieron y toda mi gente que me está apoyando allá en Mexicali todos están viendo esta pelea y miraron que, que, está, que fuimos campeones y pues muchas gracias a mi gimnasio mi entrenador aquí está Jaime Rogerio que era mi esquina aquí estábamos desde el viernes, me acompañó tengo apenas dos peleas con él y hemos trabajado muy excelente pues gracias a todos mis patrocinadores también que traigo aquí en el traje los presenté a, antes de subir al ring Pues muchas gracias a todos y a, a ustedes, a la promotora esta que nos brindó este, pelear en esta función. Big shout out to my mother. She's here uh, present. A few of my friends uh, also uh, did the trip from Mexicali uh, to my gym. My trainer, Gerardo, he was with me the whole time since uh, Friday. To all my uh, fans, my friends who are supporting and are watching this uh, streaming. I would like to thank this, uh, the promoter, um, Bodisteca Boxing Promotions, and you know, I'm really happy to be the new champion. Yeah, and let's hear it for your new WBF International Lightweight Champion, Jose Luis Roja! And we're here with a loser of a very close decision. You, Gio, we were talking uh, ringside while we're watching the fight, uh, how judges judge the fight. Some judges look at numbers of punches uh, and connects. Some judges look at the power that the punches land with. It seemed like it was a battle of that tonight between you and Jose. How do you feel about the decision tonight? Um, it was a close fight. I don't take nothing away from him. He was a really good, tough fighter. Reminds me of uh, Barrera. Just fucking, just fucking fires back. He can take a punch. I heard him twice to the body. I have no idea how he didn't go down. Caught him upstairs. Don't get me wrong, he caught me a couple of times too, but I was never hurt too, like, oh shit. I caught him a couple of times where he should have gone down, but he took it very well. It was a very close fight, but, um, you know, I keep it real, he, he won the fight. 
Yeah, I mean, it was a really close fight. It seemed like he came out, and it seemed like you thought that your power would kind of uh, intimidate him a little bit more early in the fight. And you stuck with that tactic. We talked about it before the fight, how you know, you're going to have to adjust in there possibly and do whatever the fight dictates. And it seemed like there was a point where you realized, like, oh, maybe I need to box a little bit more, use my in and out movement. Uh, I was talking with Dylan Miranda, my co-host. He was talking about how you're so good at that, but you didn't really seem to employ that until later on in the fight. Is that something that you wish you might have wanted to start doing earlier in this fight, maybe using more movement as opposed to try to stand there and really hurt him with power shots? You know, as a commentator outside, it's different than being the fighter. I understand what you're saying, but uh, I changed my style in there a couple of times, actually. And I did figure it out, but I think it was a fourth round. But when you do that, that takes a lot of energy from you because, you know, it's, you're moving and, and you're hitting and and everything, you know, it's just it's just uh, a very hard style to change your style from Mayweather to Maidana to to uh, uh, Rios. You know, it's just I changed my style multiple times into that fight. And like I said before the fight, I could have picked anybody I want, but I picked him because I like to give the fans a good fight. Speaking of giving the fans a good fight, we were talking about that win or lose. Every time you step in this best in boxing ring, you make more fans here, and you did the same thing here tonight. Congratulations. Congratulations on being able to co-promote this with King Geo Promotions. You did a great job, and uh, we can't wait to see you back in here again. Anybody you want to give a shout-out to, final, final thank you or goodbye to before we close the night out here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was awesome doing this. Um, Um, I've been doing this since I was 15, but I'm done. You're going to hang up the gloves here right now, Giovanni? This is the last fight we're going to be able to see you here do your thing in the ring? Yeah, thank you. Well, Gio, it's been a great career. You've made so many fans. We love watching you fight. We love it that you're still going to stay in the game with King Gio Promotions, man. It was a great final fight. Congratulations on a great career, guys. Let's hear it for the last time for King Gio, Giovanni Gonzalez. People just don't know what we go through. All the time away from family, hours of road work, fighting through the pain of training. We know people just don't understand how tough this life is. People ask me then, why do it? Simple. I want to be the best in boxing. Follow Best in Boxing on YouTube, where the future stars of boxing fight. Well, Dylan, what a night of fights culminating with that world title main event there for that WBF Intercontinental title. It was a tough ending, though, to see a fighter in there pouring his heart out as Giovanni Gonzalez retires. Like This is, will be his final fight uh, in his career. What did you think about that retirement statement and, and, and the last performance that we're going to see here, best in boxing, of Giovanni Gonzalez? I think it was an honor to be able to sit here and watch the final fight of Giovanni Gonzalez. Like I mentioned, Giovanni is a fan favorite. He's a fan favorite for a reason. Every single fight he brought out, he left his heart in there. Um, I feel honored to have been able to comment on his last fight. I feel honored to be to be able to host that interview where he, he, he retires. Uh, I tell you what, what a great night of fights. That, that, that title fight at the end, our co-main event was an awesome fight as we see uh, Rene Giron uh, finish a really tough Guadalupe Acosta. I, I, I don't see anyone stopping him in the future. Uh, he's only rising in the sport of boxing. What would you say was the performance of the night? Was it that Giron knockout? 
I, I have to give it to him. Yeah, that was a back and forth uh, fight. I didn't know who was going to win that fight, so seeing him win, put a definitive stamp on that fight with a knockout, that to me was a performance of the night. Yeah, we see the, the, the former uh, queen of boxing there uh, as Karina Moreno loses to an up-and-coming Naomi Reyes. Impressive performance by her as well. What would you say the fight of the night was out of the whole amazing uh, Best in Boxing card that we had here? The fight of the night? See, that's a tough one. That's a tough one because all these fights were fantastic. But I was really engaged with that Jerome Acosta fight. Absolutely. That right. to me was fight of the night. Can't, can't, can't get enough of that kind of action here at Best in Boxing. Uh, thanks to Boris Teca Boxing Promotions uh, in association with King Geo. This has been uh, Global Sports Streaming, Best in Boxing. Another great night of fights in Tijuana. I'm Brandon Kyle, Dylan Miranda, my partner. We will see you next time.